Over 20 years ago, Alex Jones created the media platform called InfoWars, and in the decades since, it's grown into a truly remarkable institution with over 200 radio affiliates, tens of millions of unique website visitors monthly, and a 24-7 live news TV channel broadcasting from state-of-the-art studios in Austin, Texas. InfoWars has become the most trusted independent news source in the country dedicated to delivering breaking news, live coverage of special events, and exclusive reports you won't find anywhere else. While the old guard media struggles to maintain supremacy in a landscape rocked by innovation and technology, InfoWars has been at the forefront of the information revolution. From 8 million radio listeners, over 2 million YouTube subscribers, or the billions of views of our online content, InfoWars proves dominant in every facet of media we enter. For the hardest hitting reports, uncompromising analysis, for high profile interviews and bombshell revelations, accept no substitutes. Demand truth. Demand InfoWars. InfoWars. Tomorrow's news today. It is Monday, March 4th, 2019. I'm your host, Alex Jones, in studio. We will have Paul Joseph Watson joining us. Just flew in last night. He'll be hosting with us for two hours coming up today. He'll be in studio the next few days as well, working on a lot of big things with Paul here that will be announced soon. You know, the big takeaway, obviously, isn't just that the Democrats are launching dozens and dozens and dozens of fake new investigations as the Mueller report uh, release is imminent. The bigger takeaway is that mainstream corporate media has been breeding communism and socialism in the corporate world and in the universities for decades. And now, like aliens popping out of somebody's stomach in the movie Alien, they're busting forth. New Yorker magazine, when did everyone become a socialist? The New York Post goes out and does interviews. Socialism's millennial fans don't know what it is. We've sent our reporters out, but so have countless other groups, and they ask them what it is. They don't know who the president is. They don't know the branches of government. They don't know why Venezuela's collapsing. They don't understand anything. They just heard, I'm going to get something free. These are the same schmucks that go, and they sign up for these university educations that are about worthless around 90% of the time. I'm not knocking college. It used to be good. But when you made government get involved in it and put all these trillions into it, it drove up prices and lowered quality because it took competition out of it. And now it's wrecked. So when we come back, next segment, I'm going to plow into the story first that I've got right here in my stack, right here in my stack, when did everyone become a socialist? Well, when did everyone become so stupid? Now, uh, we're also going to get into the latest on AOC because she is the gift that just keeps on giving to illustrate the mindset of the average leftist brainwashed zombie. People say, how are you going to pay for everything being free? We'll just do it. Well, why do you drive gas-guzzling cars and fly on more jet airplanes than almost anybody, but you say carbon's so bad? She says, I'm just in the world I live in. You go out and eat hamburgers, AOC, you say we shouldn't. You go out and fly on private jets, but say we shouldn't fly commercial in coach. This is who you are. It's how you operate, and everything you say you stand for is the opposite. Everything you say that you believe in is actually the opposite of what you do. So we're going to be looking at all of this today and then really some incredible developments on the censorship front where the Southern Poverty Law Center, the ADL, Media Matters, and Hope Not Hate, that that's the same group out of the UK, are admitting, okay, we just want all nationalists and conservatives and Christians and pro-gun rights groups taken off the internet. And they're now listing Paul Joseph Watson, Tommy Robinson, and countless others just saying, period, they're too popular, take them off. And they have the minister in England who is over the internet threatening to fine Google if they don't take Tommy Robinson and others off the internet. And why is that? Because Tommy Robinson got undercover footage of the BBC 
trying to get women to say that he'd assaulted them. That's right, because he's exposing their criminal activity. We got these crooks on the run, and they're going to fail, and their citizenship's going to fail. But they've gotten very, very, very bold, very, very out of control. Well, the New Yorker magazine, on its cover, asked the question, when did everyone become a socialist? You mean, when did everyone going to the universities, getting the worst, worthless degrees, in 90-plus percent of the cases, openly tell us who they were? In fact, in major polls, more than 50% of millennials are either communist or socialist, but they don't want to live in a communist or socialist country. They want to live in the wreckage of a once great capitalist nation falling into socialism, and they want free stuff on the ride down to Venezuelan or North Korean oblivion. And they want to be functionaries within the system during that phase of the cannibalization of civilization to exercise power. But they are extremely lazy. They are extremely stupid. They are beyond redemption in many cases. And so they will never rule anything. This is mega corporations sabotaging nations with the virus of collectivism, the virus of communism and socialism to collapse them so they can then be vertically integrated after the collapse and then set up into a neo-feudalistic fascist system like so-called communist China that is really a hyper-fascist oligarchy with less than a ruling, uh, one, uh, less than 1,000 uh, ruling individuals uh, over the enslaved population and parlaying uh, their labor, their energy out to the rest of the world. Socialism's millennial fans don't even know what it is. The New York Post uh, went out and talked to the average Democrat voter, talked to college students, uh, looked at a bunch of different Gallup polls, talked to fans of Alexandria Cortez or AOC, and the whole situation that they're pushing and found that they don't even know what socialism is. Well, the controllers know what it is, but the minions don't. So when they hear Cortez say, all your health care will be free, your college will be free, your transportation will be free, your lodging will be free, your food will be free, except who's going to produce that? Who's going to put the labor and the energy in? Well, the globalists think in the future it'll be robots. But see... They're putting robots in place so that humans can't have a future, and so humans are obsolete. And that's the big globalist trap. Make us dependent, set up a post-human world, create a system where the vast majority of people are lazy, spoiled brats, and then get the tiny elite who are still cognizant, still hardworking, and still focused. And by elite, I mean elite in that they've kept their humanity, having them sign on with the technocrats for the orderly extermination of 99% of the population. That is the big, giant enchilada. And here's the article, Pinkos Have More Fun, a disgusting New York Magazine article about how cool Pinkos are and how stylish and how awesome they are. A bunch of mentally ill clowns wearing 1000 and 2000 $3,000 wardrobes made by slaves in China. Meanwhile, we're easy victims inside the country, so dangerous to police, they're fleeing the nation. El Salvador, tens of thousands dead, MS-13 ruling the nation, but the left here in America says there's God's children and wants them here. The more, the merrier. Because, again, it's people committed to the takedown of civilization to capture it. And then later the globalists come in and mop up after the socialists and the communists have taken the nation down. Let's continue with the hypocrisy. Gas-guzzling car rides expose AOC's hypocrisy amid Green New Deal pledge. A study done, because it's in the Federal Elections Commission numbers, of the thousands and thousands of Uber rides she took show that their favorite is big black Tahoes and, of course, uh, other large SUVs like Suburbans and that she flies around all these celebrity galas on jets 
But what does AOC have to say about that? Well, she responds to Carbon Footprint Expose, saying, I'm just living in the world. That's right, when she and her boyfriend or her chief of staff sit down to have hamburger meals, that's okay. You don't get hamburgers. She gets hamburgers, and she could eat a few with what appears to be all that meth she's using withering away. Of course, in the photos, it doesn't look like her food's gone uneaten. The chief of staff doesn't look like he's on methamphetamine like meth mouth woman AOC. Uh, but continuing, ladies and gentlemen, freshman New York representative Alexandria Cortez responded to the Post report on her giant carbon footprint by saying that she's just living in the world. I also fly and use AC, the Green New Deal touting politician tweeted Saturday night. Living in a world as it is isn't an argument against working towards a better future. According to the GND fact sheet, the nation's most totally overhauled transportation by massively expanding electric vehicles, manufacturing, building, and charging situations everywhere built on high-speed rail create affordable public transit available to all with the goal to replace every combustion engine vehicle. But of course... That would only mean combustion vehicles in Europe and the United States and Australia, China and India and Mexico and 160 other nations. They make zero cuts. It's all written to shut us down at an industrial level. And that's what the founder of Greenpeace has come out and said. He said he founded Greenpeace to actually try to save species and help the environment, but it's been hijacked by globalists to create global taxes and control and surveil everyone. ZeroHedge.com has the article. It's up on Infowars.com and Newswars.com. Greenpeace co-founder rips pompous little twit AOC as garden variety hypocrite on climate. And that is definitely the truth. Now, we're going to continue after we go to break with the really big news that ties into the governor of Virginia and why they think you only remember him and blackface, that was brought out days after he was caught openly promoting killing babies after they're born. We've got big new developments on that front. San Diego pathologist accused of improperly harvesting children's organs mm. and their tissue in Texas lawsuit. That's out of the San Diego Tribune. San Diego Union Tribune. We'll be getting to the rest of the story like Paul Harvey would always say, when we come back, then we're going to look at DNC. Says attempted cyber attack wasn't Russia. It was a test from Michigan by the Democrats, a false flaggy. And the reason that's important is you're going to be seeing more of these, and they hope you're stupid and aren't aware of what's happening. And then, of course, U.S. House panel launches probe into possible obstruction by Trump. It only intensifies from that point on. So we're going to go to break, come back and break it all down. Uh, two key points I want to hit right now, though, before we go any further. PQQ with CoQ10, when it is from organically derived sources, is incredible. Almost all of the CoQ10 and PPQ and, and, and other systems are synthetic and really don't do anything. But there are patented forms of BioPQQ and CoQ10 that give you the maximum effect. And a lot of them are sold at medical offices for $400, $500 without a prescription, but you get them from medical offices and they still mark them up six, seven times. We only mark it up 150%. That's how we can normally sell it for $150 DNA force. So it's our flagship, most expensive product, but incredibly discounted. It's been sold out again for six months because it's so hard to procure and develop and get. It is back 33% off. DNA Force is finally back in stock at InfoWarsStore.com. It's amazing. Get it today. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get into the bottom of the rat hole, the bottom of the spider hole, and why they want post-birth abortion. And I know the audience knows this, but the general public does not know this. And when you finally force people to look at it, 
it completely freaks them out and wakes them up fundamentally. And they say, I've got to do something about this. I've got to speak out against it. And they start doing it, like Joe Rogan. I know it sounds crazy to say they've had human animal clones for decades. Now it's mainstream news. You got to force folks to look at it. I know it's crazy to say that major governments are about to push everybody getting implantable microchips. But it's the reality of what's going on. I know it's insane to say they're keeping babies alive and selling their organs. But it's going on. And that's why Northam is trying to normalize it because he knows it's coming out. I'm going to cover that next segment. But this segment, because I was out last Friday getting my ruptured bicep operated on, I shot a special report for that evening where I talked about Paul Harvey and the weird coincidence that the day we made that video, just thinking about him, was the day uh, that he died 10 years before or his 100th birthday. So here is that powerful report that I'm going to have reposted to Infowars.com right now so you can share it with everyone you know. Paul Harvey, if I was the devil. Tomorrow's news today. Paul Harvey, one of America's greatest journalists, but also poets and just spoken word folk heroes, is 100 years old today. And we're celebrating his birthday. Paul Harvey died 10 years ago today at 90. But today, his spirit is a hundred years old. Now, this is serendipity or synchronicity or, or providence. About a week ago, one of our great researchers and video editors, Darren McBreen and I were talking about how this is a real fight between good and evil. And I said to Darren, I said, we need to illustrate that. And he said, I have an idea. Let's take Paul Harvey's famous 1960s, if I was the devil speech, and let's put it to what's currently happening. And so literally 20 minutes ago, before we went on air, I said, you know, when did he die? He died like five years ago. I want to talk about Paul Harvey. This video that Darren McBreen put together is so powerful. One of the most powerful things we've ever put out, literally. I see that like five years ago. And, and Darren pulls it up and he goes, oh my God, he died 10 years ago today. The Satanist and the devil may control Hollywood and they may control the Federal Reserve, but they don't control the real universe and how God works. And Paul Harvey was a good man. And so is his family and the work they've done. And so Paul Harvey's still alive. He's with Christ today. His spirit's gone on to the next level. But it's just another sign of the synchronicity, the serendipity, the discernment, the providence, the manifest destiny of liberty and freedom. And so I'm going to air this piece, and I'm going to post it at Infowars.com. You can repost it anywhere, promote it however, but whatever you do, get it out to folks because this is a fight between good and evil. Paul Harvey's not dead. His soul and spirit lives on, and his ideas in this realm live on and are more prophetic and poignant now than they were back in 1960s when he first said these words. We salute the work of Paul Harvey and all their patriots that love justice. We're so glad his voice is alive with us today. So here it is. Paul Harvey, if I was the devil. Hello, Americans, I'm Paul Harvey. If I were the devil. If I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. And I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population. But I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree. Free. 
So I set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by the shooting. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. Do, Do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach you to pray after me. Our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flame. The president of the United States is racist. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect the discipline of emotions, just let those run wild. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing, I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who want it until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. I would caution against extremes. I'm here to warn people. You keep telling me to shut up. This isn't a game. In hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public, and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now, already in the world. Now you know the rest of the story. Infowars, tomorrow's news today, and that's why they want it off the air, but they're failing thanks to you. Spread those links, spread those videos. Word of mouth is unstoppable. Only you can carry the ball forward. Only you can stand against this program with God's help. I want to be completely clear here to infinity. I don't get up here and rattle off a bunch of negative information to you to demoralize you or to scare you. I get up here and I talk about these issues because I know historically, but also at a gut level, and I've experienced it myself, that when the general public hears the truth about what's really going on, and it's just laid out instead of just kind of rolled out real slow that people get upset and they do something about it and they change it. And we've seen that happen on so many different fronts. When they're sure to ban our guns and we stand up and they fail. Or when they're sure to have their carbon tax and transfer congressional power to the TPP. This global government body and the public stands up and we get pulled out of it or globalism and, and world government in trouble all over the planet. That's because people talked about the world government. They talked about the global government system. Didn't matter if we got ridiculed or attacked. We relaunched, you relaunched populism. And we're seen as the main enemy of the globalist info wars because we're a focal point for you to get the word out. We're a focal point for people to know that we're not alone. And then in most nations, nationalist and free market populism is the majority idea of hardworking people from blue collar to white collar to nouveau riche. And it's the old money and the establishment that wants a monopoly. And they're the ones at war with the family, the individual, and with God. Because these elites want to be God themselves. So when I get into the negative horrors of Governor Northam 
when I've got all this other news and all these other interesting clips, why do I go back to that? Because I saw him come out and say that, and Trump tweet about it, and it become the number one story. And I said, that guy is going to be destroyed soon. They're going to find some other dirt and focus in on that as a distraction. So I've learned how their tactics work. And sure enough, they had that blackface and the KKK crap for years. That's why they ran him. It's why they would do that in your books at that time, was to was to people would set themselves up on purpose, saying, I'm here to be compromised. That's how fraternities work, especially the so-called elite ones, because everybody's seen you have sex with a goat, and they took Polaroids. You get compromised on purpose. It's a gang initiation, whether it's Skull and Bones or whether it's MS-13. And in a Christian culture, what's the most taboo thing you can do? Satanism. So it's Skull and Bones and MS-13. Look it up. Both groups do satanic rituals to join. It always goes back to the same thing, doesn't it? So when I talk about Northam, it's because they don't want Northam in the news. He refused to resign. He's now doing a tour where he teaches everyone to be obsessed with racism and He's the moral authority who refuses to leave because he's so moral. And I'm going to say it again. They're keeping babies alive after they're born. And these medical boards who follow something called bioethics that replaced the Hippocratic Oath in the last 20 years in the Western world, these boards decide who lives and who dies, not just babies, not just children, not just old people, everybody, so they can usurp your living will. They can usurp your directives. They can usurp your rights. And that's where many areas of Europe have already gotten. Where they're killing people that come in off the street and say, I'm depressed, an hour later, they're dead. And then next, we're going to kill you because we say your life isn't worth anything. You know, everybody overuses Hitler. But when it actually came from Hitler, we'll tell you. Volkswagen, Audi, the modern Olympics, the Olympic symbol, the space program, Autobahn highways, super highways, Autobahn touring cars, all out of Hitler's brain. He was definitely a futurist. And they set up something called medical bioethics in 1934. By 35, they were killing retarded children. By 36, they were killing perfectly healthy children. By 37, they were grabbing people off the street, taking them to mental institutions where they would die. By 38, 39, they were arresting people by the tens of thousands. And by 1943, they were killing millions of people a year in death camps. I read it in the Nazi books. I know it's not a conspiracy theory. Hitler wrote up the final solution. Now, the EU was a Hitler plan. All of it was a Hitler plan. But Hitler was trained by the Cold Springs Harbor facility in New York and the Rockefeller Foundation that on record funded the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute with Margaret Sanger, who was Hitler's advisor. Hitler gave her the highest award a German or non-German could get, and he gave the same award to Thomas Watson, the head of IBM, for helping run the death camps. So pulling back, ladies and gentlemen here, let's type in IBM and the Holocaust. When you hear the governor of Virginia Talking about keeping babies comfortable, they're saying there's no more law, there's no more courts. The medical system decides who lives and dies. That is directly from the Nazis. It's where they did their first power grab. So when you hear about forced inoculations, or you hear about killing babies after they're born for whatever excuse they've got, this is a usurping of law, just like we did here in the 20s and 30s and 40s when they sterilized poor people. And some folks disappeared and died as well. This was all set up here. Now, I'm going to go to a short clip since I 
mentioned it, of the governor, again, saying we kill the babies after they're born, and people can't come to grips with this. They can't come to face it because they know it's wrong. They can make it up before the baby's born. Now it's already born. How is this happening? So people can't oppose it because it must not be true, even though it's happening. And then when we come back, as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story. San Diego pathologist accused of improperly harvesting children's organs, San Diego Union Tribune. Here is the governor. There are, you know, when we talk about third trimester uh, abortions, these are done uh, with the consent uh, of obviously the, the mother, with the consent uh, of the physicians, more than one physician, by the way. Um, and it's done in cases where there may be severe deformities, there may be a, a, a fetus that's non-viable. So in this particular example, uh, if a mother is in labor, I can tell you exactly uh, what would happen. Um, the infant would be delivered. Uh, the infant would be kept comfortable. Uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. So, so I think this was really blown out of proportion. Yeah, it's blown out of proportion. And of course, we can put behind me on screen, IBM and the Holocaust. You can go read all about that. So that's the reality. And when we come back, I'm going to finish up with this, and then I'm going to tie it in to CBS News and others reporting that soon we'll all have brain chips. So we've gone from crazy people say there's going to be a global government with brain chips to, oh, you're all going to have your brain chip, and Google's going to run it. But if you're not a good globalist, we'll just turn access to your brain chip off. That's all mainstream news. It's all coming up. So get the news of 20 years from now today. Because 20 years ago, I laid out exactly how you'll have a neural brain chip hooked into AI, hooked into a global network. Monday through Friday, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'm your host, Alex Jones. Don't forget, we have David Knight, the David Knight Show, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. before me every day, with a massive analysis, guest, clips, you name it, very powerful very informative. And then, of course, the war room with Owen Schroyer, and that is 3 p.m. Central Standard Time every day. So we're seeing human life being devalued. Kill the old people. Kill the unborn. Now kill babies after they're born. We were always warned that's where this lead. Now we're told bestiality is a great thing. Pay for people's sex changes. Let the folks that have had the sex changes come in and talk to your five-year-olds about what their sex should be. It's not called being perverted or pedophilia. It's called liberal. And then we have the Pentagon going back decades, but now mainstream news, implanting chips in troops' brains to help them not be depressed or have PTSD. And then we learned a few months ago that there had been gene-edited babies and babies being born in China that weren't from two parents, but that were from four or five people. That's not a human. That's a humanoid. But don't worry, we're not having a debate about whether they have rights or not because they're in a no man's land. And now we learn those edited babies have super intelligences. But really, everything the globalist gives us, the, the cell phones, the GMO, everything they give us that's supposedly going to enhance us makes us stupider, makes us lazier, makes us more depressed, and ruins our humanity. Because all the technology we're given is given with Trojan horse back doors for a real reason. The story is up on Infowars.com. It's from CBS News. We're going to play a clip of it right now. Northwestern neuroscientist researching brain chips to make people super intelligent. That's right. And then it says that you'll dial in, and the other report I have, to a Google master system worldwide where you interface with the AI. And then it knows everything you're thinking, but then you're able to access what other people are supposedly thinking. Can you imagine that even if this worked, how it would make you the, the ultimate scatterbrain, unable to focus? Or, of course, it's not designed to work, how it will actually take control of your mind. You'll think you're omnipresent. You'll think you're all-powerful. You'll think you've got godlike powers, but really it'll just be tapping in to your endorphin regions like a PKD cyberpunk wirehead and you'll be nothing but a rat with a wire plugged into its brain that'll now shine off to lose its body for the greater good of the earth 
and to give up your carbon-based form for a silicon form and upload to the godlike machine in the sky, which is what I told you decades ago was the plan, and now it's all over the news. Yes, yes, you can be immortal, but you must give up your body. You can be immortal, but you must give up your humanity. That's the promise. We must get rid of the humans, and then those of you that become this new life form can merge with this master intelligence so like a ghost in the machine keeps directing us to build this anti-human nightmare future. So here's CBS News on how wonderful brain chips are. What if you could make money or type something just by thinking about it? Sounds like sci-fi, but it may be close to reality. CBS2 Morning Insider Lauren Victory shows us a Chicago connection. Neuroscience and business. He's got lots of matter all over his home and the not-so-distant future on his mind. Will they be humans in as little as five years super smart people could be walking down the street and in women who've paid to increase their intelligence neuroscientist moron surf makes that prediction because he's working on a smart chip for the brain make it so that uh, it uh, has an internet connection and goes to wikipedia and when i think this particular thought it gives me the answer the Northwestern University business professor is collaborating with Silicon Valley bigwigs he'd rather not name. So what if you could type directly from your brain? We know Facebook is chipping away at this. Tesla founder Elon Musk is too. Everyone is spending a lot of time right now on trying to find ways to get things into the brain without drilling a hole in your skull. Can you eat something that will actually get to your brain? Can you eat things in parts that will assemble inside your head? mind-blowing but relationships could be on the line this is no longer a science problem this is a social problem surf worries about creating intelligence gaps in our society that's on top of gender racial and financial inequalities they can make money by just thinking about the right investments and we cannot so so they're gonna get richer they're gonna get healthier they're gonna live longer the IQ of an intelligent ape is about 70 the average human 100 a genius around 140 people with smart chips 200. Will they even want to interact with us? But they're going to say, look at this cute human, Stephen Hawking. He can do differential equations in his mind just like a little baby uh, with, you know, 160 IQ points. It's amazing. It's so cute. Now let's put it back in a cage and give it bananas. Time will tell, or will our minds. Lauren Victory, CBS 2 News. So, the heads of so that individual just said exactly what Ray Kurzweil says, what all the other, quote, transhumanist, transfuturists say. Oh, we'll be like gods, you'll be like animals. Will they even keep us around like a monkey in a cage or an insect or a turtle in a terrarium? And you, you're just going to want this, and it's going to be great, and everybody's just going to join with it. The Internet was built to track everything you do, to create a supercomputer that can predict the future, that would then have inputs directly into your life, surveilling you and controlling you, finally in your brain, to take control of your consciousness. This is a synthetic matrix takeover. DARPA in the 60s drew up plans for us to live in energy tanks from birth, powering the earth with our own heat, plugged in, living in a virtual reality, and that that would be the future. The Matrix is based on that. The Matrix is the real plan, or one of several competing plans, where they actually still keep humans alive. But all of it is to seduce us and to trick us into going along with this and accepting. And sure, if you've been in a motorcycle accident, you've got a brain chip like my uncle that keeps him from having horrible seizures, it's great. Now when he starts having a seizure, he starts talking like a robot. They'll be like, well, I tell you, everything's fine. I'm actually, I'm doing better now. Wow. Yeah, that just stopped a major. I mean, he has big grand mal seizures. And they've devastated his body. But since he got the brain chip, he's fine. But he'll just be sitting there talking to you. And all of a sudden, this isn't just a chip to a nerve. He's got a brain chip. And he'll start having a seizure. He talks like a robot because he's interfaced with a digital system that goes in and manipulates his brain not to get hyperactive. It's got all these great uses. But remember, the globalists are behind it. It's amazing. We'll talk more about it coming up. What I know is the establishment's trying to stop people getting what God gave us through Mother Nature. We've been sold out for almost six months. 
It is the best telomere. It doesn't regrow telomeres. It slows their their death. So it's pretty much the same thing by a different route. And it detoxifies the body. It does so many incredible things. It's something I always forget to take that everybody should take. When I do, it's amazing. And it's DNA Force Plus. Finally back in stock, 33% off. Leading brands that are similar and aren't synthetic cost three to four times what this does. 97% reviews, 4.7, ladies and gentlemen, stars. And it is ELEV ATP, ancient peat apple extract, PQQ of the organically derived type, CoQ10 of the organically derived type, organic reishi, astrologus, a bunch of other special roots and even more incredible ingredients, all concentrated DNA force. Leading brands, ladies and gentlemen, are $400, $500. It's normally $150. Right now, it's 33% off. The ingredients in this are extremely expensive. So that's why it's our most expensive product, but it's only marked up on average about 130%. Then we discount it, it's marked up about 90%. Percent that helps us fund our operation. The average supplement's marked up five to seven times. Ours are marked up 150%, and then we always discount some. But DNA Force is back. DNA Force Plus is finally back as one of our most powerful formulas. We've been having difficulty keeping DNA Force Plus stocked in the store. And it's been out of stock actually for months and months and months and months. Now it's 33% off. We know it's important to supplement your body with the most potent bioavailable antioxidants. And that's why DNA Force Plus has exactly what you need to provide your cells with protection. The powerhouse ingredients in DNA Force include, I went over these, all these ingredients have been chosen for their ability to help support heart function, cellular energy production, assist in boosting mental health, assist in supporting healthy skin and blood vessel health, and promoting energy production in the body. Don't wait until it's out of stock again. Sign up to additional 10% off with AutoShip. 33% off right now, though. DNA Force now back in stock at InfoWarsLife.com. All right, here's what I want to do. Paul Watson has been a very busy beaver at CPAC. He flew in late last night to Austin, tweeted he'd be here today. He's not here, which is fine. He'll be here the next three, four days. Be in the studio a lot with us. And I've got a lot of clips and a lot of news to get to. I'm, I'm sure Paul will probably show up soon. He's just not answering his phone. Um, I want to go back and look at a congressional report four years ago that the, 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 the leftist press demonized. That was Tom DeLay, a Justice Department wants to legalize 12 perversions. Turns out that was accurate and that was true. And the Newsmax was accurate. So we're going to be getting to that report next. We'll also look at the new attacks on the president, the latest on AOC, and more. But first, uh, Venezuela, America's illegal wars and the cost of freedom. Here's part of Greg Reese's report. After the Twin Towers were felled into dust and rubble, the illegal neocon agenda of regime change was unleashed upon the unwitting targets of the Federal Reserve System. The plan was to use 9-11 as a catalyst to topple the governments of seven countries. I just got this memo from the Secretary of Defense's office that says we're going to attack and destroy the governments in, in seven countries in five years. We're going to start with Iraq, and then we're going to move to Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. The neocons lied their way into Iraq with imaginary tales of so-called weapons of mass destruction. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> And as the world watched the sovereign nation of Iraq fall, a new precedent was set. During the Obama presidency, the anti-war movement disappeared and illegal aggression became so commonplace that Americans now criticize the president of the U.S. for wanting to end wars. There is now much talk about Venezuela. The fundamental principle that governments must rest on the consent of the governed has been at the foundation of Venezuelan democracy since 1958. And any credible reading of the Constitution shows that Maduro was not re-elected in 2018. In direct violation of the Venezuelan Constitution, Maduro organized an illegal election. The Maduro government banned opposition political parties, candidates, and leaders from running in the election. 
illegally imprisoned opposition leaders before the election, coerced and intimidated citizens into voting for the president's party, engaged in verifiable manipulation of vote tallies, organized the process through an election authority controlled by members of Maduro's party, murdered protesters who exercised their right to assemble peacefully, engaged in widespread illegal use of government funds to finance Maduro's campaign, used state-owned media to promote Maduro's candidacy, and disallowed international organizations from observing the vote. According to the Constitution, in a situation with no president, the president of the National Assembly shall take charge of the presidency of the Republic. Under the Constitution, Juan Guaido is the de jure president of Venezuela. Although Maduro is in de facto control, the international community has overwhelmingly rejected it as an illegal election. This seems different than the regime change of the Bush and Obama years. The leftists love the brutality and hypocrisy of Maduro's illegal regime. And many on the right would love to help the people of Venezuela restore law and order. The question is, what legal authority does the U.S. have to get involved? And if a country... Uh, that's just part of a very thoughtful, very balanced report by Greg Reese up on Infowars.com. All right, in this hour, I'm going to cover the waterfront and take your phone calls. And I legitimately want to ask listeners a question. Two questions. What do you think Trump should do with this national emergency now that Rand Paul and others have been suckered into an improper interpretation of the Constitution that the president can't declare an emergency when the border is under threat? That's in the Constitution. That's the president. And you've got a lot of people saying, hey, let's not topple the dictatorship in Venezuela, even though it threatens the U.S. and surrounding countries and is collapsing and the people are begging for it, people are saying, don't do it. And I tend to not want regime change, where we overthrow some ally like Egypt and put Al-Qaeda or ISIS or the Muslim Brotherhood in. But if we just stand by and let a 1,000-plus people starve to death in Venezuela, and it's in northern South America and causes a collapse into the U.S. border, which the U.N. is helping foment, that's a real territorial threat to the U.S. and a real national interest cut and dry. That's first year geopolitics. But here's why I may be actually against it. In fact, I think I am against Venezuelan intervention. I've really thought about this. I've meditated. I've cogitated. I've, I've dwelled on it. I don't trust the neocons running this hemisphere's policies. Trump's put them in there. I understand why. They've got all the connections down there. They helped run regime changes before. They're the only competent people. And by competent, it doesn't mean I agree with them, but they're very competent. <laughs> they're not stupid. They're very smart. They're very learned. They're very studied. They're very focused. They're very hardworking. They're, they're, they're not lazy dumbos. And they would know how to cause this transition and then put a good government in there where people actually vote for it. But neocons never do that. They want to use it as a larger crisis, and they'll put in a right-wing fascist government. They'll then fund leftist arms in that government to then topple surrounding countries and bring down the whole region. No good can come out of neocons. The entire destroyed Middle East, all of it is their baby. And we have the seven-nation takedown plan that got leaked you know, 15 years ago by Wesley Clark and others. So we know destabilization. The neocons are involved in, implode, in imploding Europe's borders. They're involved in the censorship. They, in fact, they run it. You think the Democrats with AOC and Pelosi and Michael Moore are competent? No, the neocons are the brain of the New World Order. They funded the Arab Spring. They funded ISIS and Al-Qaeda and the takeovers of the Middle East. Trump came in and blocked it. Hell, our Pentagon did that and said no to the neocons six, seven years ago. And Rand Paul did the right thing then. 
Rand Paul said it was wrong. Rand Paul said we're not going to be Al-Qaeda's Air Force, and then ISIS's Air Force, and so did Ted Cruz. And so those are really the big questions there. And so now that I really pull back, I don't want Venezuela collapsing. I don't want it collapsing into Central America and then into the U.S. and Mexico. And I want to help those people. And I know that the opposition leader was elected according to the Constitution, and I'm sure he's probably a good guy. But do you think Trump can really control the neocons to not just exacerbate the problem and make it worse? Oh, and let's go further. The Bay of Pigs, right after Kennedy gets in office, the CIA wants to get control of him. They convince him to launch this operation, and then they don't let the, the, the air cover show up. The operation's maybe one-tenth of one percent as big as it should have been. Totally doomed to fail. Maybe a thousand people against a half million troops. The CIA had run Fidel Castro before. He'd visited New York. He was the Abraham Lincoln of the Caribbean, blah, blah, blah. This whole thing was a double cross setup because the globalists wanted to use Cuba later for a war with the Soviet Union. That came out in Operation Northwoods. Kennedy wanted peace, but wanted to be strong. So they staged the Bay of Pigs, the Bay of swine to embarrass Kennedy. And that later was declassified. So do you think the neocons, if Trump gets into a war that's got his name on it, they're going to be waiting Maduro with their anti-aircraft guns and missiles when the troops come in. They're going to be waiting and they're going to let them absolutely create huge casualties and then they're going to say that Trump is incompetent. And it just hit me last night. And it hit me as I was doing the broadcast. Hey, get into that. That gut level, these globalists that aren't American, the, the high-level CIA or British Empire type, global corporate types, sell us out to China types, and they're pissed that Trump wants to make America first. And they will 100% give Trump a defeat if he tries to go into Venezuela. So I am now against Venezuela regime change because I don't trust the neocons because I've never seen them do anything good because they come out of evil. Leon Trotsky was number two in the Soviet Union and ran the persecution and murder of millions of Christians and others. And when Stalin threw his butt out, he went to Mexico and his number one aide was Mr. Crystal, William Crystal's father. And when he died, the head of the Communist Party in the U.S. was what became National Review and everything else today. And these folks are bad news, and they mean business. When I say business, I mean capital B. They said, we can't beat conservatives, we can't beat Christians, we got to lead them. And because Russia threw us out, We've got to get the U.S. completely against Russia. And that's all of what you saw that came after that was, and it didn't mean Russia was, Russia had been taken over by Trotskyite types, proto-Trotskyites. And because the Trotskyites got thrown out, they were pissed. Russia was already put into a communist system, turned evil and bad. But the Trotskyites weren't running it anymore. So they were mooey angry. And so that's the reality. I'd love to see regime change. I feel so bad for Venezuela, a lot of great people, but I just don't think we can get involved because, because you can't trust the people that are running these operations. They just can't put a country in and let it be in power and have a free market nation. It would then spread all over Latin America. They can't allow that to happen. Latin America used to be as rich as we were 50 years ago. 60 years ago. They're not going to allow it. The globalists want destabilization here as well. Am I wrong? And then the other big thing, Rand Paul. I love Rand Paul, really smart guy, but he's getting brownie points like he did back in the campaign from leftist media. Oh, the president can't usurp the power of the purse from Congress. Only if it's in acts of war or the border or insurrection. And I agree that he shouldn't have gone with the 76th law that does it via law enforcement and all this. He should have done it as commander in chief. You better damn believe the president outside of Congress could spend any amount of money or put the troops or call out the militia on the border.
That is sacrosanct, cut and dry. And under the 76 law, with all the 36 other emergencies, and they're saying this one didn't come up to muster when it's the most clear, cut and dry one? So, Rand Paul, I guess, Mr. Constitution and Mr. Civil Liberty, but then sometimes he listens to the left that is trying to trample the Bill of Rights and Constitution, get rid of the free speech, get rid of the Second Amendment, Fourth Amendment, Tenth Amendment, Seventh Amendment, Ninth Amendment. Hell, Trump, here, here's the key why I trust Trump on this. He pulled us out of the trans... Pacific Partnership that, that they worked on for decades that Hillary helped write to transfer our sovereignty to global government. Why wasn't Congress pissed about signing the power of the purse over to some foggy secret world government group with the chi -coms involved? No, he killed it. He brought the power back here. And then the president has the power to say clearly our border's under attack by giant UN organized caravans meaning to break our border and break our courts where the Democrats trying to say we can only hold 16,000 people on these beds. Once they break the border, it's over like Europe. So the president better damn well declare the emergency. He'd be derelict in his duty if he hadn't have done it. Toll free number to join us, 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539, infowars.com. Stay with us. I am your host, Alex Jones. We are broadcasting worldwide on radio and TV and the internet at infowars.com and newswars.com. Please never forget that if you don't go there to infowars.com or newswars.com, you're not going to get all the news, the videos, the coverage, the guest, the breaking information. The globalists work around the clock to stop this transmission from getting out. So if you just joined us, is Rand Paul right to say Trump's national emergency to defend the border is unconstitutional when it's right in the Constitution the president will defend the border? I think Trump didn't go far enough. He should have done it as commander-in-chief with the military and the budget. We've always said, pull our troops out of all these foreign countries and defend our border. And then right as the full UN assault happens, Trump tries to do it, and then his own party. I've got the headlines right here that Trump braces for GOP rebellion over emergency declaration, The Hill. Democrats prepare for end of Robert Mueller probe with new investigations. U.S. House panel launches probe into possible obstruction by Trump. Think about that. This country's fighting for its life. Meanwhile, we've seen Indian aircraft getting shot down, missiles being fired. What could start the next world war, most analysts agree is going to be Pakistan and India. Tensions ease between India and Pakistan. A key train service between Pakistan and India resumed on Monday, settling an easing of tensions between the two nuclear-armed countries after a major escalation of tension last week over the disputed Kashmir region. Cold start, India's answer to Pakistan nuclear bullying. Cold start is India's military doctrine aimed at punishing Pakistan without a full-blown nuclear war. Ex-U.S. Ambassador to Pakistan praises Trump's quiet diplomacy in India-Pakistan dispute. India-Pakistan tensions. Who won the war of perceptions? As confrontation on the ground escalated, India and Pakistan scrambled to control domestic and international narratives. India had planned a missile attack in Pakistan. India had planned missile attacks in Pakistan on Islamabad had received intelligence report, sources said Monday. Sources said India and Israel wanted to target Pakistan, adding that following intelligence reports, Pakistan thwarted their planned missile attack. India was informed that Pakistan would respond if missile strikes was carried out against it, sources said. India's two planned attacks were foiled following intelligence reports, sources said, and added that Pakistan had shared Indian plan to target Pakistan with friendly countries and told them and their national community that Islamabad wants peace with New Delhi. Indian forces are unable to enter Pakistan territory, however. There is fear India could plan a terrorist attack inside Pakistan, the sources say. And it just goes on from there with the Indian aircraft shot down and the rest of it as this stuff continues to get out of control. And of course, since the Indian jets were shot down, they've shot down a Pakistani drone. And the two countries have been at war with each other off and on for a long time. Pakistan used to be part of India. 
So we've got the national emergency that Republicans are set to pass a vote on with the Democrats, and then Trump will veto it because it won't be a two-thirds majority, his first veto. And you've got the situation in Venezuela where I think you can't trust the neocons to have good regime change there. Sure, Maduro's a dictator. Yeah, he got voted out. Okay, get rid of him. But the neocons always put in something just as bad because they're evil. Leopards don't grow new spots. Their spots don't change. So where do you stand on that? I want to get listeners' expert take, and I mean expert, because I always enjoy hearing from you on that subject and, of course, the whole India situation. And we can throw in there Trump walking away from the uh, disarmament deal with North Korea. We already got them to get rid of a bunch of their bases. We already got them to stop doing missile tests and threatening the whole region. We already got them to move the ball down the field. This time, he didn't move the ball. So Trump left. If Trump would have given concessions for nothing, he would have been a traitor, a loser. But he didn't. He went and he tried. He failed, but at least he tried in the arena for that old quote from Teddy Roosevelt. So what's your view on that as well? Your phone calls when we come back on the other side. Uh, that said, we've got a big special on our body's ultimate turmeric formula that is about to end this week because we're close to selling out bodies. Bodies is the strongest turmeric formula you're going to find. 95% curcuminoids. There may be a few other brands that have close to that, but the average brand has 3 to 5% curcuminoid. We're looking at 170 plus reviews, 4.9, 98% reviews from power reviews. Bodies is the strongest turmeric formula out there for inflammation, for stamina, for your muscles, for your energy. Everybody knows about turmeric. This is the strongest, best out there. Bodies, it's 50% off with alpha power that is for strength, libido, energy, stamina, uh, you name it, a natural testosterone booster. It also helps women as well. This combo deal is going to end this weekend. It contains two of our best-selling products, the Enforce Life Strength and Recovery Combo. And it's here to help you maximize your workout and support your overall health and wellness. For both pre- and post-workout, the InfoWars Life Strength Recovery Combo contains Alpha Power, the powerhouse of testosterone support formula, and bodies are incredible turmeric whole body formula. Available at 50% off together. Alpha Power was built to help you reach the peak as a true alpha male, but it's also good for women, using natural ingredients to help increase energy, reduce fatigue, boost sports and work performance, and help maintain normal high free levels of testosterone you can take charge of your own energy again bodies is our revolutionary turmeric formula that provides whole body support and recovery with pure turmeric extract and our time-tested ingredients in every bottle bodies can help support your joints mobility flexibility inflammation and immune system for a better recovery period with these products combined the strength and recovery combo to help you enjoy and fuel your workout every day Take advantage now and support your body while boosting your workout with the Strength and Recovery Combo. Available at InfoWarsStore.com for 50% off. That combo deal is about to end at InfoWarsStore.com. Strength and Recovery Combo and DNA Force is back after months and months of being sold out. It's an amazing formula. 33% off out of the gates as well. And that special spill to run for a few months while we have it in stock. But whatever you do, go get some great products, whether it's the Wake of America coffee or the Super Blue fluoride free toothpaste, uh, or whether it is some of the other great products like the fish oil, because they're great products you need and it funds the info war. Juan Guaido, the opposition leader that most believe actually won the election last year in Venezuela, has returned home from Colombia amongst massive demonstrations of support, but also attacks. About to go to your phone calls right now, again, on should we be involved in Venezuela? Even if we did, the neocons will sabotage it to make Trump look bad and to destabilize the region. It's what they do. They're evil, just like the Democrats. What about India and Pakistan? What about North Korea? What about the national emergency with Rand Paul coming out and saying he doesn't support it? I'm almost always aligned with Rand Paul, but he did some of this during the campaign where he'd go along with the mainstream media and I've read the Constitution. The president is in charge of the border. But he should just wear the commander-in-chief hat instead of going along with that 76 law that allows him to use other areas of the budget 
than what Congress allows. Just do it as the commander in chief, then he'd have support. But regardless, Trump got us out of the TPP. Trump started pulling us out of these foreign treaties that sold out our sovereignty. He's bringing power back to the U.S., back to our country. So I wish Congress would have had more energy to go after the TPP that transferred the power of the purse to multinational governments and, 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 and corporations, but now they're so upset because Trump's going to defend the border. What do the listeners think? We've got Stu and John and John and Chris and Ken and Robert and Dennis and Steve and Jefferson and John and Georgia Ann. Let's talk to Georgia Ann first from the great state of Tennessee. Georgia Ann, thanks for calling. Thanks, Alex. Um, I know you've been through a hard time. It's it's going to get rougher, I hate to tell you. Um, as far as Rand Paul goes, I don't have a problem with him saying what he wants. We have too much censorship now. If that's the way he feels, I think he's pretty well supported Trump. I like Trump. I've supported Trump. But there's a few things I don't like that he's doing right now. Well, let's name those because there's a lot Trump's doing I don't like. Oh, yeah. It's red flag laws. I don't like it. You know, we like our guns in Tennessee as good as you do in Texas. <laughs> and, you know, I don't like that. Um, you know, he's too much involved with Israel. I'm a Jewish person that's converted to Christianity, so I am not anti-Semitic. Yesterday, I watched CPAC and the way that they <laughs> they did nothing but talk about Israel. Now, Trump didn't, but everybody else did. Then they kicked out Laura Loomer, which I thought was very ironic. You know, she... No, 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 no. ma'am, 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 I totally agree with what you're saying uh, because I, I have nothing against Israel, but... I want to fix our country. You know, how does Israel have a big, giant, beautiful wall that works great and has cut down like 99% the amount of suicide bombers and things? And then a lot of the Israel lobby lobbies for us not to have a wall. Well, and it can correct me if I'm wrong, you know, but they're down there right now working on the wall. I mean, it's not a wall, but it's going to be a good barrier. Well, sure. I mean, I mean, Trump has fulfilled most of his promises, and I, and I like him on that front. But where I have a problem with him is Whitaker, who I thought did a great job, was removed this weekend. Whitaker out at Justice Department. Uh, and, and we've got uh, this individual that literally put people like Mueller in power coming in and, and, and putting in all these new people. Uh, and so it looks like Trump's just refilling uh, the swamp right there. It remains to see what they're going to do. The proof will be in the uh, pudding. Uh, Trump, uh, again, also is doing nothing about all the censorship uh, of, of not just himself, but of conservatives, libertarians, and uh, nationalists everywhere. While the big tech lies to Congress, I'm, I'm upset with Trump about that. I mean, I still think Trump's way better than Hillary, but we can't sit here like cult members and not criticize Trump. I'm saying the place to criticize Trump is not on trying to defend the border when it's under literal U.N. attack to overwhelm our judges and our courts and law enforcement to cause a collapse level event. When foreign governments are working to collapse borders and the Democratic Party is saying no borders, no walls, no USA at all, and America was never great, will never be great, when we have a U.N. quarterback Soros-directed plan to break our borders, you better believe the president has the right to militarize the border and to shut the damn thing down. And all I'm saying is, of all the things Rand Paul could be after Trump on, why is he not after him on this one? Why is he not supporting him? I think that he is supporting him, but he's given his opinion. That That's still here nor there as far as if he's supporting him. They're building the wall. I think they're going to, they have been militarizing the wall. I don't care what they do. I don't care if they start shooting down there. But, well, Georgia, you know, I hear your points. I got to jump, but you made some great points here. Uh, look, Trump rode in on a nationalist populist wave. And if he wants to bring in a bunch of neocons and a bunch of establishment people who want to be friends with the mainstream media so they don't get attacked, then, then, then that will be his undoing. I haven't seen that so far, but I've seen some signs of it, and I don't like it. All right, let's take another phone call here. Let's talk to John in the Virgin Islands. John, you're on the air. Go ahead. Alex, how are you doing? Been listening to you for years, and uh, these particular issues that we've got going on today seem to be as though there's a real vortex, a tightening vortex being created. And um, 
You know, we talk about Venezuela, we talk about the border, we talk about everything that you go over every day, and it just keeps weaving a tapestry that comes to the same kind of, of picture every time. And it really is more a question than it is a statement, Alex. And the question is, is why is it myself, yourself, and everyone listening to my voice are constantly subjected to the negative forces that we pay to be protected from with our tax dollars and just our trust. Briefly on the border, we talk about the potential uh, powers that can be invoked in a national emergency. You just mentioned with the previous caller that there are situations that are causing us to doubt President Trump in some critical areas. I mean, for example, the declassification of the, the uh, uh, FISA documents and so on and so forth. And we keep being moved from issue to issue without put, hitting a bullseye on each one of them one at a time. And I'm afraid, Alex, that the only people who are going to be able to fight our way out of this, regardless of the best that President Trump can do, is going to be the people of the United States that are armed with the help of God. And that's my comment. Oh, well, there's no doubt the globalists want our guns uh, because they want to be able to force this on us and they want to be able to trigger an economic collapse and then have us starving to death. But then they've done uh, analysis and know that that would probably form groups that would take the local governments back and local governments would stand against that and actually distribute the food evenly. Socialist and communist and fascist regimes always use uh, food as a weapon. Uh, and so they know there's enough regional government, enough armed people that that old classic authoritarian plan would fail. So it is the First Amendment and the Second Amendment that duly hold up the republic in times of crisis. And, and that's why there's an attack on the first that Trump has allowed. He's given lip service that it's wrong. Th 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 that's not enough. And now he's letting them tiptoe towards the red flag laws where they'll just, without a judge or jury, take your guns. And if Trump does that, his goose is cooked. It's, it's that simple. All right. Thank you so much. Great points, John. More calls only a few minutes away. Get ready. I'm Alex Jones. Whatever you do, spread the links. Please. You're the only way we get at it out. Infowars.com. Yeah, I watched a lot of Trump's two plus hour record CPAC speech, and I then watched the behind the scene things that happened and the limp wristed Republican establishment that kind of sycophanted around. They fought with everything they had to keep Donald John Trump out of office. And they represent the Republican blue bloods that went along with the Clintons and giving black people triple the prison sentences of whites and uh, wanting open borders and cheap labor. I mean, everything we oppose, they are. And we've taken over their party with many members of Congress. There are a lot of good members of Congress now, like Nunes and Jordan and Gates and many, many others. And they're good, caring, smart, informed, hardworking, dynamic, passionate, truthful men. Not just their actions, but the, their demeanor and how they behave. You can say, that's a good person, and then you see them deliver. But I watched Laura Loomer being treated like crap, being lied to by the Republicans, being thrown out for seeing Oliver Darcy, who admittedly goes around trying to censor the Internet, and, and, and she was polite to him, but she was dogged and stayed on him for a couple minutes. And so they throw her out because Right Wing Watch, run by the Southern Poverty Law Center, complained. And you get around these Republicans, folks, that are establishment. And let me tell you, I know all the inside baseball from Fox News. They tried to hire me for three different shows, starting back 12 years ago, eight years ago, nine years ago. They wrote articles saying, oh, Jones wants to have a job at News Corp, but we wouldn't give him one. I would not even entertain it. But they would offer me these shows. They couldn't believe it. But you don't want one? I'm like, no, I don't want to fly every Friday afternoon to New York and then tape a show on Saturday that airs on Sunday. No, I, I don't want that. Well, nobody turns this down. Well, I do. And there have been people like Matt Drudge, you know, was, was, didn't turn down their Fox shows because they wouldn't let him show an aborted baby or a baby's hand reaching out and grabbing a doctor's finger. A baby that I guess we're about to kill. I forget that was like 20 years ago.
I'm going to go back to your calls. It's just frustrating that at Fox News, I'd say 80% of the camera people and the producers and the lighting people and the and, and people that do, do, do all of it, they are New York leftists. And I don't even say New York City. They're, they're leftists that have gone to leftist colleges that have moved to New York, and it's a cult. And it's the same with the other channels. And so you sit back and you see how they treat people at CPAC. That's the loser Republican Party that we've basically taken over. But because none of us are political, let me tell you, people say, oh, Trump should just hire a bunch of people. The average person nowadays is specialized. They don't know how to run a multimedia operation. Even an average reporter has grown up being given all their talking points and is told how to dress and what to say and what to do. They've created specialized classes of people in communications that are nothing but empty followers. And so Trump is working with a bunch of zombies in D.C. and New York and L.A. These people are followers. So I know why Trump's got his problems is that despite the fact he's a maverick and done a lot of incredible stuff and better Supreme Court justices than Hillary and panic the establishment, every time he gives in to them and staffs his operation with neocons, they repay it with backstabbing. So I've noticed the paradigm and how this works. You're completely loyal to Trump. You don't exist. You get upset with Trump and hold his feet to the fire. You get results. So people need to call the White House. They need to call Congress. They need to be involved and focused and say, listen, we put heat on you about the emergency. You did it. We put heat on you about this and that. And you did it. Good. We want prosecutions of the Democrats. We want you on the offense, not on the defense with all the stuff they're pulling. And we want a move against the racketeering, the cartels, the censorship that's going on. Because if you won't defend the First Amendment, we know you won't defend the Second. And I know Trump's thinking bump stocks aren't really used for anything. I don't think they're effective. They're pieces of junk. But he wanted to act like when there was a Vegas attack... You know, well, we, we, you know, we got rid of something. We, we, he wanted to take that away from them. And now they're just moving on to semi-auto and everything else. And now he's talking about red flag laws where no judge, no jury, just somebody thinks you're dangerous with no proof, your guns are taken. If Trump endorses that, he needs to get on the offense against it. If he does that, his base is gone. And I don't want to see Trump do that. So I say that out of compassion and caring about the country and about what Trump could continue to be to say, danger, Mr. President, don't go down this road. Let's go back to your calls. John in Texas, thanks for holding her on the air. Welcome. Hello, Mr. Jones. Can you hear me? I can. Thanks for calling. My pleasure. I, I want to talk about to all the, all the listeners. I want everyone to listen very closely. We have to support Donald Trump no matter what. We remember, Donald Trump looks up so JFK, we all love JFK. I'm a huge JFK fan, John F. Kennedy. And look what happened to him. You said it yourself. On foreign policy, he got shot. So Trump is not about to get shot. If Trump gets shot, where are we at? We got no progress. So it's about being smart. He's not an idealist. He's actually a businessman and getting stuff done in real no, life. No, I get it. You're saying he's a pragmatist. And, and even John Stewart had a submit, doing a great job getting 9-11 families their funding. It was already been funded. Uh, doing a great job trying to end these wars. Doing a great job on criminal justice reform. I mean, he is yes. steadfastly doing what you would do to make a country healthier. Absolutely. And he said, notice that right after he took away Syria from the neocons, he gave them Venezuela. So you see, it's like making a deal so they don't off him, so they don't get rid of him. And he wants them to think that they have control over him. It's about, it's kind of like he's a ninja. It's well, he, you're a really smart caller, John. No, no, I mean, it's true. Regime change yeah, is so, evil and will fall apart in Syria. Unless it's done by the Syrians, we don't want that. But in Venezuela, it could be doable and is the right thing to do. But can you trust the neocons? But I get it. It's a lesser of two evils. Well, I think he's actually even smarter than that. He's using their own nature against them because they're going to create a migrant disaster. They're going to create a refugee disaster, which is only going to play into Trump's hand to put more optics on the need for a wall.
Well, if they don't fix Venezuela, it's going to cause the collapse. Either way, it's, I mean, Latin America is collapsing. It is disintegrating, which, you know, I don't say that. Like, oh, look how good we are. They're collapsing. No, we've got problems, too. We do not want Latin America collapsing. You know, Latin America is gorgeous. I've been all, I've been all over it. And the people are amazing. And the food and the art and the resources are above ours. I mean, Latin America is a giant breadbasket. Full of oil, no, exactly. full of full of everything, but it can't get itself together because it never got rid of colonial control. Absolutely. So, but right now, Trump, all Trump really cares about is America, and we need this border. And so, right now, what you were saying earlier, how the way Trump is getting the border, he could have done it in a better way. I think we need to be very vocal and maybe get a petition going that we want Trump to do it the way you said, the way you were describing how he could get it done around that 76 law. We need to let him know that we're behind him on that. Well, that's right. He needs to go commander-in-chief route because under that, the border is under attack. There's caravans coming. You don't do it under a 76 law uh, that you know just deals with funding and emergencies outside of Congress for other emergencies presidents have done, which is constitutional. In many, in many cases, it's not. In this case, it is. I've looked at it. But as a commander-in-chief, it's totally the right thing to do, and it's constitutional. I just don't know. And I'm not, the, I'm not trying to put Rand Paul down, but I'm sorry. Rand Paul is doing nothing but getting a political victory with the left because he knows Trump's going to veto this. So it's nothing but optics, and I, I just think it's a cheap trick. Yeah, it's not the first time Rand Paul has betrayed us. It's not the first time. He seems to have some kind of compromising. They seem he seems to be compromised. But we, as his true supporters, as Trump's true supporters, we got to be very vocal and draw and let people know we want him to secure it in the way that you were describing. So we need to do a petition, get like a hundred thousand signatures or more. We need to do something. Well. Uh, Don Jr. Uh, last week, I guess it was last Monday, went on Tucker Carlson and said, don't worry, my dad's getting ready to do something. We know the, the, the censorship's real. It's happening. We promise we're going to take action. They know that his constituents are getting really pissed. And we're out here working to get the truth out and telling the truth, and they're just letting, you know, Media Matters and all these other criminal organizations engage in this activity. Uh, it's just crazy. We need action now. We're only a year out from the main... 2019 election being in the thick of it. We need action now, not later. Take action. Trump will support you. If you don't, you're destroying yourself. My God. Good call, John. All right. Stay with us. More calls in two minutes. Well, mainstream news is announcing what we first broke five years ago and have been hammering since China's communist social score to go global. In fact, it's already being used the last two years in Venezuela to track everyone's political activities. If they don't behave, they can't buy or sell. That's right. They are artificially controlling the food and water to control the population. The old Ceausescu trick, the old divide and conquer siege trick. We're going right back to your phone calls. And then coming up, I mentioned it. I didn't get to it. I want to go to the Tom DeLay exposing the secret Democrat memo to promote pedophilia. Uh, we're going to do that. Uh, we're also going to get into a host of other issues. We're continuing with your phone calls. Paul Watson was exhausted. He called a few hours ago and said, can I come on the show tomorrow? Because he had jet lag coming over here and then was at CPAC. He'll be here for a few days in studio the next day. And I said, fine, Paul. So he'll be here uh, in a few hours. He'll be on the war room and some other stuff uh, coming up today. But he'll be in studio with us tomorrow. Uh, but let's go ahead and go back to your calls. Who's been holding the longest here? Hmm. I guess that would be Stu and then John. Stu in Wisconsin. You're on the air. Hi, Mr. Jones. Uh, I have um, a play on Venezuela and then also a uh, product idea. Yes, sir. Uh, regarding Venezuela, I'm getting a little bit of an echo here of yourself. You I'm sorry. That? We can try to work on that. Uh, we're not, I believe, sending okay, any I'll audio back. Sorry. Would you, would um, you like to call back? No, it's okay. Okay. In, in Venezuela there, I'm sure you'd remember that, uh, since you have a memory, that uh, Chavez beforehand was um, attacked with pancreatic, pancreatic cancer. And had well, I mean, I, I mean, I think people say that when anybody famous, okay, okay, I appreciate your call. I just can't handle it anymore. I, I appreciate it, but the audio is back and forth, like you said, and I don't think you can hear me. Um, I, I don't know what I can say to somebody that can't hear me. And I agree, we may have one of the worst phone systems the planet's ever seen. 
I mean, I don't know. I worked at three other radio stations before I had phone systems. And it may just be the nature of phones today. But the calls don't sound good a lot of the time, and the half of them can't understand. And when I call in, I can't hear either. I can't hear anything. Okay, I understand. So we'll see what we can do here. We'll, we're gonna we're gonna try to stay on the air. Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna work on that as best we can. Now I wanted to hear your point. But the audio doesn't work, so that interview's over. Um. Hugo Chavez was a globalist. He had all sorts of IMF World Bank deals to sell their people out and sell their resources out. So he made all these massive amounts of money offshore, uh, just like people like Manuel Noriega did in Panama. And, and who knows? They've got ways to give people cancer, sure. Viral and also with microwaves and with, 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 with different radioactive isotopes. Uh, so that could have been the case. That could have been the case, but I just don't know. <clears throat> You know, I ought to start a radio show where we just take landline calls. Remember how good landlines were? <clears throat> where you could hear everything everybody was saying. You could you could hear a pin drop. Remember those? So I always ask the questions to rip off old Joe Rogan piece they did like 20 years ago. In the future, we were all supposed to be flying around in jetpacks, you know, silver spacesuits. But by the year 2000, your cell phone craps out behind a bush. So I think that's really what it comes down to. We're, we're going to see if it's our phone system or if it's you. When we come back, we're going to try again as hard as we can. And we're going to go to callers like John and Marlene and Chris and Ken and Robert and Dennis and Steve and Mike and Jim and others. From Rhode Island to Wyoming, from New Jersey to Indiana, from Colorado to Kansas, from Virginia to Illinois. It's your phone call straight ahead in 60 seconds when we come back on the other side of this call. But whatever you do, don't spread newswars.com. Just roll over to Soros and mainstream media and just don't take action. So is Trump's national emergency constitutional? Do you support it? Should we back neocon regime change in Venezuela? Getting rid of something really bad, but neocons have a history of putting something worse in. What about the situation with North Korea? What about India and Pakistan and the threat of nuclear war there? These are the big geopolitical issues. It's really a referendum, I've noticed, with call, the callers about whether they support the president or not. And then at the bottom of the hour, I got reminded by one of the producers of this four years ago, Tom DeLay, Justice Department, wants to legalize 12 provisions is what Tom DeLay blew the whistle on, former majority leader. Turns out he was right all these years later about the Democrats wanting to legitimize things like pedophilia so with the video that's coming up bottom of the hour a quick announcement because i never plug new affiliates and these came in the last week or two kznu 1450 a.m and kazz 1400 a.m in utah and nevada they cover a whole bunch of towns like st george enoch mesquite and cedar city 14.50 a.m. and 14.00 a.m. KZNU, 14.50 a.m. and KAZZ, 14.00 a.m. And then another great uh, affiliate, WLVA, 5.80 a.m. in Virginia. Big station, Lynchburg. Always pronounce this wrong. Rustburg, Amherst, Bedford. Proudly broadcasting the Alex Jones Show weekdays. WLV. A, 580 AM. And again, even if you don't have family in Virginia, maybe you're in New Jersey, maybe you are in West Virginia, maybe you're in Florida, maybe you're in Texas. If you've got family in Lynchburg, Rustburg, Amherst, or Bedford, call them. That's how word of mouth gets out. Hear the most banned demonized broadcast in the world on these stations and many, many others. Now, continuing, ladies and gentlemen, with your phone calls. I want to go to who's been holding the longest now here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a call from Chris in Indiana. Chris, thanks for holding. Hey, Alex. Welcome. Hi. 
Hey, um, I wanted to weigh in on the constitutionality of the wall and everything, but first I really got to tell you, I saw Brian Stelter's show yesterday, and Oliver Darcy was on there. They were both trashing CPAC and saying it was nothing but people selling books, Trump steaks, and believe it or not, Stelter said that Dan Bongino was there selling survival gear, and Stelter said that it's nothing but junk that people don't need. And I think that just proves that he wants us all patriots dead and saying, you know, survival. I mean, Brian Stelter, their sponsors are Ritalin and Prozac and all sorts of prescription drugs that kill you. So I didn't follow that. But, yeah, Brian Stelter is a monstrous creature. Yeah, he's pretty much saying we don't need guns, water filters, hand crank radios, flashlights, jumper cables. We don't need none of that. Well, what he's, he's saying is all... they don't want conservatives and nationalists creating our own economy and, and getting people to fund us to build our own media system. The big cardinal sin, if you go back to the Clinton documents that came out in the uh, Clinton library, not the foundation, uh, that Judicial Watch sued and got about five years ago, right when they get elected in, in 1994, they say... Our number one mission is stopping conservatives and Christians having their own economy. So we've got to ridicule any Christian that sells anything. Exactly. Now, the constitutionality of what Trump, I think, I want to tell President Trump, if you're listening right now, you are, people are not going to have any it's not, they're not going to be able to call you a dictator if you go straight to the Constitution. It says Article 2, Section 2. It says it right there. It states the President of the United States is both the Commander-in-Chief of both the Army and the Navy. What's the point of an Army and a Navy? To protect the national sovereignty of the country. And it goes on to say he'll and, defend the borders and stop insurrections. Yes. And so there is no argument whether this is constitutional or not. Oh, he knows he's going to lose in lower courts and then win in the in the Supreme Court. It's all cut and dry. I agree. So why is Rand Paul saying he's against this? Because Trump didn't do the commander in chief route. He used a 76 law where you could argue either way. My point is Trump got us out of the TPP that was a true power grab by multinationals. So how is he bad defending the border? Exactly, and I think I agree with you totally that Rand Paul, he's just doing it because he, it's just to, it's just for some like you said brownie points for the media, and for whatever reason he would even care to have brownie points from the media, I'll never know, because he's someone that stood up for the Constitution 100. percent I mean, I don't, I it really is a mystery to me, Alex. Well, you know what happens? But, uh, Brian Stelter goes into the bathroom. And go, you know, does his business, and then I guess Rand Paul like sneaks in, and like Brian says, "You're welcome. You can have it now." And Rand runs in. Exactly. Why would any of us want any any of the support of the corporate media? I appreciate your call. And look, I don't dislike Rand Paul. It's just the president defending the border when the UN's funding giant groups and trying to crush it. The Democrats say to get rid of the sovereignty. He better damn defend it. I appreciate your call. It's just, it's ridiculous. But Rand's been a big Trump supporter, so maybe he's just doing this because he knows Trump's going to veto it anyways, and this is how he gets brownie points and looks like he's, quote, balanced. You can't be balanced with a bunch of out-of-control globalists. All right, next caller holding the longest would be John in Wyoming, then Steve in Montana. John, you're on the air. Hello, Alex. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. You've been calling for years. Good to hear from you. Yeah, I'm on a landline, of course. I don't trust cell phones. <laughs> you sound like but a trillion hey, dollars. Yeah, well, one of the things that uh, I wanted to point out is President Trump doesn't need the emergency declaration because Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution reads, the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a Republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion. And on application of the legislature or of the executive when the legislature cannot be convened against domestic violence. But right there in Article 4, Section 4, not only does it guarantee us a Republican form of government, but it protects each of those states against invasion. So that's all President Trump has to invoke. He doesn't need an emergency declaration or anything of the sort. Now, another thing. I have known Rand Paul since he was a child because I supported his father, Ron Paul, 
when he first ran for the Congress in 1972. And in 1972, he lost that race, but he came back two years later in 74 and won his first congressional race. And the problem with Rand is the same problem that Ron has. They're they're both good people, but the problem is they're too libertarian, and they are very weak on border immigration and border security. Both of them are very weak. And another thing that you mentioned a while ago that was right on the money, when you watch Fox News, no matter how conservative the uh, talk show host is, whether it's Tucker Carlson or, uh, let's say, Lou Dobbs or Sean Hannity. The guests they put on. No, not only the guests, but the crawler at the bottom of the screen is being typed out by a New World Order leftist. Because the way that they word and the way – because, look, I've worked in broadcasting going back to 1969, so I'm not new at this thing. But these idiots that they hire to type those news crawlers at the bottom of the screen are people who could easily work for CNN or MSNBC. Oh, listen, I talked to the biggest talk show host on Fox. They say, Alex – Stay there. I want to talk to you more, John. By the way, I had a plan like five years ago to do a show with John and a few of these other great callers. We never got around to it. We're about to launch. I always say this. It never happens. We're so busy. New talk shows. But I want to invite John on with his full name and his whole background because I know who he is. Been involved with the Republicans a long time as a guest later in the week. But stay there, John. I want to get more of your intel and the more calls straight ahead. Infowars.com. There's a story up on Newswars.com that we'll be covering Coming up in the next segment and then continuing with your phone calls, newswars.com. Hillary Clinton receives a Unity Award for having election quotes stolen from her. That's right. So that's the whole false reality going on. We'll have that video for you coming up uh, next segment along with several others. Back when the Republicans warned that they got a secret memo from the Justice Department about a plan to legalize 12 perversions including pedophilia so that's the next segment but john in wyoming has been calling for i don't know 15 20 years i don't know uh he's a great guy you know who he is did stuff with the republican party witnessed a lot of stuff back in the reagan days what would you call this point rep because i want to support trump and i know he's overall a good guy and they want him out because he's trying to be president and trying to actually do things for the position pragmatically for the nation but uh, a lot of the things i see him not standing up against censorship uh, or letting the swamp come back in with this new attorney general and getting rid of Whitaker, it, 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 it makes me really have a concern. What do you think? Well, I agree with you, Alex, because I think the problem is as long as he has Jared Kushner up there in the White House, he's going to continue to have this swamp resistance at every turn that he makes. He's got some people in there. Look at John Bolton. John Bolton has been a longtime CFR member. And, of course, you play that clip of Tom Brokaw. Not only is Tom Brokaw a decades-long member of the CFR, he's also on their board of directors. And when his good friend Joe Foss died, the General Joe Foss, who was an outstanding gentleman, I met him at an NRA convention, he had been the president of the NRA for a few years. And so when Joe Foss died, Tom Brokaw deliberately, in giving his eulogy, deliberately omitted the fact that General Foss was an NRA member and former NRA president. And so we've got people throughout the White House now who are not friends of the president. They're doing everything they can to uh, distract him. They're doing everything they can to subvert his administration because I've called there and left messages, for instance, on this Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution. But I, I don't know who picks up the phone. You get a, at this number that I call, which I cannot reveal over the air, and I can give it to you off the air if you'd like. But this number that I call, you get a voicemail, and you leave your message. And I have left some good messages for him, but apparently whoever's answering the phone isn't giving him those messages. No, no, it's true. Trump began answering the switchboard about two years ago, and then they tried to— Stop it. He would randomly sit there and answer the phone. He wants to hear what people have to say. He knows they're trying to cut him off. Remember, it was in the news. Their main mission was to stop him getting InfoWars news and Drudge news 
and Daily Caller News and Breitbart News, those that actually brought him to where he is. I'm just glad he's still in there because I don't believe in lesser of two evils. But imagine, John, give me, you're a smart guy. Give me your two-minute take on what would have happened if Hillary would have gotten in. If Hillary would have gotten in, well, first of all, whenever they claimed that there was Russian hacking, she wanted to go to war with the Russians. She wanted World War III with the Russians. Now, what the Russians have, they came out with something in early 1995. It was called the Squall Torpedo uh, for their submarines, available with both the conventional and the nuclear warhead. And it has a top speed of 200 knots. That's 230 miles per hour. There is no submarine or surface ship that can outrun a torpedo like that. Plus, they're coming up with these hypervelocity missiles that are going to be extremely difficult to shoot down if they start firing. And let's be clear. Planet. We've got them, too, but they're classified. It doesn't matter. You don't win a war like this. Right. But what, what Hillary would have done is gotten us into World War III with the Russians. And she was the one, by the way, after she butchered Ambassador Stevens and his three colleagues at Benghazi, and she butchered him. Why? Because he was complaining that her State Department was sending Stinger missiles, chemical weapons, and automatic weapons through Benghazi to the ISIS elements in Syria who were trying to bring down And all of that has now come out. I agree and, with you, though. I can't manage an office of 90 people. Okay, and they're great folks, but I just can't do it. I don't know how you're supposed to manage. The, the, the president has, count the military, millions under him, but tens of thousands of active employees. Most of them are leftists. They admit they're sabotaging everything. So I'm not giving the president a free pass, but uh, the fact that he sent Donald Jr. on to not just Fox, but a bunch of talk shows to say, hey, I know you're mad. I know you're being censored. We're going to do something soon. They're getting the feedback. People are really pissed about having their First Amendment walked all over. And so uh, I think he should take action with antitrust. Uh, he should take action by, by doing a televised address about it. I mean, what does he need to do about l letting the, the, the globalists and the mainline right-wing pundits who want to get TV money and make elections all about Fox News, they think they're in competition with those of us that are on the Internet and on talk radio. No, I'm not trying to make the money. I don't take political money in a campaign, you morons. Keep your damn money. I want the country intact and it's so it's the republicans are trying to cut the internet off because they think it'll make it the focus and they'll get more rnc money this is insane now i told your screener a while ago when i spoke to him he's a very nice young man by the way and i told him that some of the stuff that we're up to here in sheridan that i can't discuss for now over the air but i can discuss it with you off the air but i've got to be leaving in about a half hour to 45 minutes and I've got some business to take care of. And what we're doing is going to be, for a small town of 18,000 people, is going to be monumental. It's very legal. It's very moral. And it's it's the right thing to do for the people because you and I both know that we have to answer to Jesus someday. We don't answer to the New World Order. We answer to Jesus. That's right. Well, I've talked for five, six years about hosting a show with you and a few other guys. But regardless, I'm going to get you back this week or next week for 30 minutes as a guest. It's going to happen. John, God bless. Thank you. All right, we come back. Uh, we've had people holding. I'm doing a pretty good job here, though. We've got Steve's up next, then Mike, then Jim, then Robert, then Marlene. I'm going to get to all of you. For the sour ends. And we got Gerald Salente always on fire coming up. And then Paul Watson's here now, but we're just going to wait till tomorrow to get him on the show. Uh, and uh, we're going to have him probably on the war room, but I've got a bunch of tactical stuff to talk about with Paul. So he may not be in the war room today with Owen Schroyer coming up in about an hour and 30 minutes. So that's all coming up as well. And, and I do have these other reports. I've got a stack of breaking news and a stack of things I haven't gotten to. But I'll go back to your calls. The first thing I'm going to hit when we come back is a NewsWars.com article. I mean, this is just the upside-down world they live in. Hillary Clinton receives a Unity Award for having elections stolen from her. Remember how they fixed the debates, fixed the polls, engaged in all that fraud? President's a loser called half the country basket of deplorables in 2016. We have the video when we come back where she receives the International Unity Award in Selma, Alabama, when she's the one that says blacks are animals and predators and got to be brought to heel. 
And then we'll hit that Tom DeLay story where he was he was right now, all these years later. It says the left wants to legitimize 12 perversions, including pedophilia, and then your phone calls. It's all coming up. I'm Alex Jones, prisonplanet.com, newswars.com. Those aren't censored as much. So when you spread those on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, they don't get censored as much, and the message still gets out. All right, we're going to continue with your phone calls. Oh, my gosh. I didn't see the where they were calling from, and I totally apologize. Robert has been holding for one hour from Venezuela. I'm like saying, we got callers. No, no, no. Robert's calling from Kansas. He wants to talk about Venezuela. So now I thought I read that correctly. We're going to go right back to your phone calls here in just a few minutes. But Elvis is in the building. Paul Joseph Watson will be on the show tomorrow for two hours, 12 noon to 2 p.m. Uh, 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 Central. That's right. Two hours live, Watson. As a punishment. <laughs> That's right. As a punishment for being the real son of David Hasselhoff. He traveled to London 35 years ago. He met a very nice lady in Sheffield, and he created the Wasselhoff. That's the legacy. As we all know it. Do you like my jacket, Alex? I, I do. Raw edge, right? That's right. <laughs> I'm here. How's it going? Good. So that's your 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 you got your RAF jacket on? Yep. European style. <laughs> so you you've you've just been in DC for a while. What happened there? Um, a lot of drinking, a lot of eating, a lot of talking, a lot of strategizing. It was fun. Candace Owens got her engagement party. Don Jr. was there, Farage was there, so I bet you can imagine it was quite interesting. Quite interesting. So you've, like, you've risen to these elite levels now. You're just like Icarus, like flapping a little little vampire bat up into heavens. Alex, Trump wished uh, George Formo, my friend, and Candace Owens a happy wedding. The only way that can top that is by getting a good wish message from you. Can you do that right now? Yes, I wish them both a wonderful wedding even though that is a hate crime under the left's rules for a man and woman to be married in a holy matrimony. That's seen as Satanism on the left. So I, I encourage them to continue uh, with their, uh, I guess you could call it heresy that they're engaged in. So that's very, very exciting. And you're going to be on Candace's show, right? Soon enough. I guess, I guess. But but the big exciting thing is Trump did call and thank uh, and, and, and congratulate me when I got married about a year and a half ago. So Trump is a really nice guy, isn't he? Yeah, well, I didn't get to meet him personally, but yeah, he, he wished them well. It was really good, and we all had a good time. Well, it's very, very Everyone exciting. Everyone was talking about you and wishing you well. <laughs> Watson, you're so funny. Well, anyways, it's fun to have you here the next few days with us. What are you going to cover front and center when you're on the broadcast tomorrow? Um, the overarching narrative, um, which is something that a French philosopher called Eric Zemmour talked about recently, which is the elite importing their servant class to be their servants and then satisfying the uh, demands of the the kind of yellow vest revolutionary movement by introdu introducing this uh, universal basic wage you've heard about this right yeah. whereby everyone gets you know 20,000 euros a year in european countries and once they get that they're shoved aside and they're told to shut up not be out on the street not be rioting so that is the pacification method that they're introducing now in many european countries to stop these people being on the streets, setting fire to stuff, because they brought in their slave class, and now they don't need people to do those slave jobs, and the native population of these European countries are not interested in doing those jobs. So now they're basically being bought off and told to show up with this universal basic income, and that's going to happen across Europe. Whether it will work or not remains to be seen. With one other key ingredient... They're, they're, they're having the ultra-rich push this tax the rich, and they have Warren Buffett and Bill Gates saying, I basically pay no taxes. Uh, they said about themselves because they write the laws where they pay no taxes. They then point at middle class and wealthy people and say they should pay more to destroy the middle class. That's the upward stairway for the poor to become wealthy. And so you're about to see the end of the middle class uh, basically sacrificed for a one-time meal or a selling of their birthright to blue-collar folks. Exactly. The, the point is that, you know, th this yellow vest sentiment, they do not want to do those jobs anymore. You know, the, part of the main reason why that, was, why that was stirred up in France was the farmers out in the rural areas, people out in the suburban areas. This wasn't a, a city-centric riot. This was the forgotten people. Now you have them being replaced, not, even, not just economically, but culturally. 
France has an 8% population. You look at cities like Antwerp, Belgium. This is the most populous city in Belgium. 52% uh, from a migrant background. The problem is 90% of those 52% vote for either left-wing or far-left-wing parties. So it's a numbers game. Once it gets to that level, it's over. And which is, that's why we're supporting the whole Brexit movement in America, you know, to reach out to people and tell them that they don't have to be NPCs and forced to vote in a cult-like way for a particular party simply because they're non-white. All right, Paul, I'll talk to you in about 15 minutes when my transmission's over. Gerald Salente's taking over the third hour in the war room. I'm seeing with calls. We'll talk about some big plans coming up here in just a few minutes. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Alex. All right, let's go back to your calls now, as promised. Good to have Paul here in Austin, Texas. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Steve in Montana. Steve in Montana, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me, Mr. Jones? Yes, sir. Outstanding. You know, I want to first of all thank you because your intro music, your shows, period, having Paul Jones Watson, you guys are incredible, you know? No, you're incredible. By, by your brain force. Well, no, thank you, because you give us the, the opportunity to share the information to others. <clears throat> so InfoWars, your whole team, perfect. You know, I take your turbo, your turbo force, your brain force, and your super male vitality, and I absolutely can't wait to get that X2 back in. We X2 X2 is going to be here in a week. Pre-orders now. Yep. Uh, it's 25% yep. off out of the gates. We, 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 we waited over a year. First, I did a big order of 50,000 bottles. <clears throat> Got it in almost a year ago. Thought not ordering again would make them, uh, you know, get me a better deal, not with the actual manufacturer, but with the oil company. And finally, after I discontinued it, they said, okay, we'll give you a more fair deal. Because literally, I mean, I was paying like $12, $13 a bottle. And then by the time I sold it, discounted it, $19.95, we, we couldn't fund ourselves. But I got a better deal. It's not as good as I wanted. But X2 is back, at least for now. Pre-orders right now, InfoWarsStore.com. Thanks for mentioning that. No, thank you, and God bless you and your whole production staff and crew and Paul Watson as well. Now, and listening to you, there are so many things in my brain and what I originally wanted to talk about was Donald Trump. And like you, you know, talking about your uh, X2, and it's the art of the deal. You know, Donald Trump, I mean, he's the original chess master. He's got more on his plate, more in the backside that we will never see. You might see more than we do. Yeah. But everything that he's doing that we don't agree with, well, it's a little bit of give and take here and there. He comes after our guns, well, there's going to be a problem. However, you know, like you said with the bump stocks, they're pointless, they're worthless, they do no good. But he's actually out there fighting to make America great. He's doing what he can. He's not perfect, you know? Well, sure, folks but always God say he's not a dictator. Him. Dictators can hardly ever get anything done. So the point is, no. a, a person in power is not like God. He's been far from a dictator since the day he started. Even when he was running his companies, he hired smart people to do jobs that he didn't know. You know, uh, he's, he's actually... I really oh, that's a big point. They always say he's got a high turnover. Let, let me tell you, I've had some great employees. I've had some bad employees, crew member. When we started actually doing faster turnover about five years ago, so we finally got good people in place, and now our turnover is not fast or slow anymore. It's, it's just moderate. But we've got really good crew now because we finally did major turnover. And so that's where it's all at. And you make the best decisions you can based on what's in front of you. However, Trump, he sees, like you, do a 360-degree deal. He sees 360 and beyond. He knows better. He's, I really well, I'll really say this. He takes a lot of our advice, and that's why they try to block him getting our info. And, you know, uh, they take the mighty Paul Watson hanging out with Donald Jr. It's almost like he's touched greatness. We'll talk to him in a minute. All right, God bless you. I appreciate your call. Now, I got a couple reports I got to get to. But I also promise to go to all these calls. So Marlene, Matthew, Robert, Dennis, Mike, Jim, we're going to all of you. We're going to go back to your phone calls right now. Alex Jones here. Tom DeLay warned six, seven years ago that it was written about in 2015 by Newsmax. He warned that the Justice Department of Obama wanted to legitimize 12 perversions. And after he said this, Obama legalized bestiality on U.S. military bases, Satanism, but amongst it was also sex with boys, the uh, NAMBLA provision. Well, it turns out all of this has now officially been adopted by the Democratic Party. So here's Tom DeLay, who they tried to put in prison for a warning of this, the former majority leader. Here it is. A, a secret memo uh, coming out of the Justice Department 
they they they're now going to go after 12 new perversions, things like bestiality, uh, polygamy, uh, uh, having sex with little boys, and making that legal, and uh, and and not only that, but they have a whole list of strategies to uh, go after the churches, the pastors, and, and any businesses that uh, tries to assert their religious liberty. This is coming, and it's coming like a tidal wave. All right, so t t Congress, I just want to get this straight. So you, you, you are aware of a Justice Department memo where that says there will be an effort to, to legitimize or legalize bestiality, uh, pedophilia, and as you put it, perversions? That's correct. That's correct. They're coming down with 12, 12 new perversions. <laughs> and the LGBT just isn't uh, the be is only the beginning. Uh, they're going to start expanding it to the other uh, perversions. And then five, six years later, they're taking people offline when a man is in college races with girls and wins, and the girls say it's wrong, they delete their Facebook and Twitter. Because girls don't want a guy in their locker room with them walking around with his slong. This is the total abuse, the mind control, the evil. And Tom DeLay was right about that. Speaking of Hillary, this is up on NewsWars.com and InfoWars.com, a Jamie White article. Hillary Clinton receives Unity Award for having elections stolen from her. That's right. Uh, let's go ahead and play a clip of that. She was exactly trying to tell you didn't expect that it was stolen from her. There's Jesse Jackson up there. This is a literal Hillary that said blacks were sent to predators that have been prison. And here are the ruling blacks, the house slaves that keep blacks enslaved. Unbelievable. So we've got that. Uh, let's continue with your phone calls. Let's go ahead and talk to Dennis in Virginia. Thanks for holding Dennis here on the air. Hey, Alex. Hi. Hey, on the border, uh, you know, the president does have a duty for to, to protect, and previous administrations have failed to protect. You know, it's uh, more Americans killed by illegals than die in the, that died in the Trade Center, World Trade Towers, that is, you know, every year. Uh, if there was a group, organized group, that was coming across the borders to slaughter four to 5,000 Americans in one day, would that be considered an emergency? Just because it's spread out over a month or even a year for that matter, does that make it less of an emergency? I mean, how high does the body count need to go before these imbeciles in D.C. recognize we have a problem at our border? Well, that's right. And, and, and we've got hundreds of thousands dead in Mexico, Latin America collapsing. As you said, over 4,000 dead a year, according to FBI's own numbers, killed by legal aliens, and that's conservative. And so it is a classic crisis. So I don't know what Rand Paul and others are thinking, saying the president can't declare this emergency. Yeah, if it was their children, if it was, if, if it was their boys and girls being killed, you know, they live in the mansions and they live behind the walls. So they're not worried about it because they're not mainstream America. They don't have to deal with the loss of life that the rest of America does. That's right. God bless you. Great point. Thanks for holding. Uh, let's go ahead and take another call. Who's been holding the longest now? Robert in Kansas, you're on the air. Thanks. Hey, Alex, if you want uh, one world satanic government, right, you got to get those perversions through. That's one of the key steps. Um, you guys have covered a lot of topics. I, I want to say to the callers that keep referencing the Constitution, I'm a constitutional lover myself, but uh, since 1871, the document's basically been void. We're a corporation. Uh, if you notice, you know, your income tax, you know, your speech, you know, they want your guns, your privacy. No, gone. I agree. You know, and Trump can declare emergencies now to play their game because he's the executive and actually do the right thing. You see, I'm not for the emergencies. They're constitutional of its commander in chief. But regardless, he can declare emergencies like they did, but then do the right thing. Well, but that's the Civil War was about that. And a lot of people think that it was about, you know, all these other things. It was really taking us from a sovereign constitutional nation into a corporation where you are now owned uh, as a stock. And so I just want people to, to realize that, you know, you can point to the Constitution. But, hey, um, uh, Paul Joseph Watson brought up UBI. I wanted to say as a trained economist that I advocate for UBI here in the United States. I think it will uh, change things drastically for the better. We could outlaw homelessness, get rid of welfare, and it is actually a fair system. So if you bust your ass on a daily basis, 
you're going to get a thousand dollar check a month also that's going to take your income that much higher um but a lot of homeless would take the money buy drugs and still be homeless my, my economist professors have argued this with me over and over and eventually they say so you just want more cheetos and pepsi sold you know and so i understand the the, the beer money argument alex and the problem is is that you're right too and so it's it's kind of hard to go back and forth but you can it sure would change the um the level of consciousness in the United States that people were able to afford food and rent uh, as opposed to uh, struggling uh, so much in, in the financial area. Um, I hear you. I appreciate call your call. We got to jump here because I've got Marlene in New Jersey. Marlene, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello? Hi, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Your phone is unintelligible, Marlene. Call me back another time. Uh, Mike in Illinois. Mike, you're on the air. Hi, Alex. Uh, great show. I, I, uh, I agree with that other caller about the, the Constitution, but the Constitution is a common law document, and uh, federal law, Title 27, Section 72. Yeah, nothing so trumps common law. Pardon? Nothing trumps yeah. common law. Well, but but if you're in contract, then that trumps it. So that's, and that's Title uh the Sixth Amendment is the right to know the nature and cause of a of an issue, and uh, Roger Stone can use that to not to stay out of jail, because they don't want you to know the nature and cause, which is a maritime type, con you know, contract where the uh, uh, there's a paper that anybody can Google online. It's called the Special Secret Maritime Jurisdiction of the United States. Now. You know, we know that the charges against Roger Stone, who's the injured party on it? Nobody. There's no injured party. So, therefore, it's a contract. Yeah, he's not it's with like, the Russians. Uh, he didn't hurt somebody. He didn't mug him. He didn't kill him. They right. claim he lied to Mueller, and that's not true. Right. And who's the injured party? Nobody. So, it's the same. Uh, you know, the maritime law is kind of the same as uh, the military code of justice. You know, here you have criminal penalties, but it's only based on contract. You know, where if you sign up for the military... You gotta, you know, have your your signature on the dotted line that says you obey. No, exactly. The law. We didn't sign on to globalism. We didn't sign on to oh, the new world order. We didn't sign on to carbon taxes. I hear you, and I appreciate you, Mike. We yeah. got Jim in Rhode Island and John in Arkansas, and I really need to go to your calls, but I need to let Gerald Salente take over. So I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to apologize to Jim and John and tell you, call back tomorrow. I'll be here. We'll take calls again tomorrow. You go to the front of the line, Jim and John, and briefly. DNA Force is BioPQQ, the organic form of PQQ, CoQ10, amazing for your telomeres, your body, everything. It's been out for months and months and months. It is 33% off, out of the gates, the best deal you'll find anywhere on a big, strong dose of BioPQQ and CoQ10. DNA Force bodies, that sell's about to end. The ultimate turmeric formula, 95% humanoid, 50% off. X2 Survival Shield. We got it back. We got the deal signed. 25% off. It'll be shipping out in about a week and a half or less. Get your pre-order of X2 today. X2 Original. Infowarsstore.com or 888-253-3139. We got the War Room coming up today. We got Gerald Salente next hour. We got uh, the great David Knight tomorrow, 8 a.m. But what matters is you're out there taking action. And without you spreading the word, we are nothing. We have a chance to defeat the globalist. We're talking about real issues here. That's what upsets them. So join me tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central. Paul Watson will be in studio tomorrow and so much more. Stay with us as we battle for a pro-human future straight ahead. Hi there. This is Gerald Salenti. Thank you, Alex Jones, and all your staff for having me on. It's real honor to be on uh, InfoWars and hosting this hour. So, what's going on in the news? Well, let's take a look at the markets first. Now, the Dow's down a bit today. And here's the headline from the uh, Cartoon News Network, CNN. Dow plunges below 26,000 after Donald Trump bashes Fed. Dow and broader U.S. stock market gave up early gains Monday, today as investors digested President Donald Trump's latest criticism of, quote, the gentleman who loves quantitative tightening, end quote, 
a direct reference to Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell. Now, I'm mentioning this and calling it the Cartoon News Network. Why? Well, because. When did Trump make this statement? Oh, Saturday. On Saturday, Trump said at the Conservative Political Action Committee conference, quote, we have a gentleman that loves quantitative tightening in the Fed. We have a gentleman that likes a very strong dollar in the Fed. So with all of those things, we want a strong dollar, but let's be reasonable. With all of that, we're doing great. Can you imagine if we left interest rates where they were? If we didn't do quantitative tightening, I want the dollar that's great for our country, but not a dollar that's prohibitive for us to be doing business with other countries, end quote. Okay, so let's get this straight. That was Saturday, right? U.S. stock markets gave up early gains Monday as investors digested President Trump's latest criticism. Wait a minute. It's not the latest criticism. That criticism, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. They had plenty of time to digest it. That's not what's bringing the markets down. The market's only relatively down compared to where it's gone up. Now, I want to make this clear. I'm no fan of negative and zero interest rate policy. All this has done is enrich the very rich. And people have no place to put their money other than putting in the equity markets, because at one time they used to put it in banks and get interest rates. They used to have savings accounts. Those days are gone. So I'm not defending Trump. I'm just saying what a cheap shot they took at Trump when the markets going down today had absolutely nothing to do with what Trump said on Saturday. And to even make it worse, and why it's appropriately called a cartoon news network, if markets went down because Trump wants lower interest rates, it should have gone up because the markets love cheap money. That's right. They love cheap money. So that just shows you the propaganda that's going on. One thing has nothing to do with the other because if Trump wanted more quantitative easing and lower interest rates, then the markets would go up, not down. This has nothing to do with it. It's only eh, kind of like a natural correction. We'll be back in a little bit. Stay tuned for more information on where we're heading. Wow, great being on. Boy, to wage, the, wage a war against corruption. Whew, that's like a full-time job. And it's everywhere. It's not only in the United States. It's global. Name the country. Name the leader. Name the freak show. How about that Katzone Macron over there in France, huh? Yeah. You see that latest? You know, it's terrible what they're doing over there in Venezuela, right? But, hey, let's not talk about what the police are doing to the people in, that are protesting the yellow vests in France. You see those tough cops pepper spraying the guy in the wheelchair? Yeah. Anyway, staying on with the economy a little bit. We had changed our forecast for an economic 9-11 for the very reason that Trump is saying, that the Federal Reserve was going to aggressively raise interest rates this year, and they backtracked on January 4th and again on January 30th. They're going to keep pumping more cheap money into the system. In this article I was mentioning to you from the Cartoon News Network, CNN, they said that... Um, Led by Powell, central bankers, or banksters to be more appropriate, raised the federal funds rate a total of four times last year. They have since backed off on the hawkish stance now that it is abundantly clear that stocks and economy, you ready for this, have become addicted to cheap money. No kidding. Really? Blow me away. Hey, when we were saying that all this was was monetary methadone, that the Fed was shooting into the system 
going back to 2009, you blackball guys like me, you said it was appropriate policy to bring in all that cheap money that has only inflated the incomes of the very rich. So again, am I for or against lower interest rates at this time? Bring them down. Keep the party going. Because if you raise them, we're going to go into a steep recession. And that's why we did a 180 on our economic 9-11. Our forecast for 2019 is the Trump bump. That's right. The markets will go up, not sharply. They'll go down a little bit. Absent a wild card. A wild card is like a war in the Middle East. Or what they're ramping up there to go in Venezuela. You think you got a refugee in a migrant crisis now? That's right, Bolton. Bombs away over in, uh, you know, Bolton, John Bolton, our national security advisor. Not my national security advisor. This guy couldn't advise me of anything. Yeah, they're talking now about uh, that stupid banal line they keep throwing out there. All cards are on the table, you know. Stop with the baloney, you know, on the table. So anyway... If they launch war against Venezuela, that's a wild card. You're going to see a human wave of migrants and refugees heading north to the border like we've never seen before. We need peace down there or else it's going to be out of line. So staying on where the economy is going and what's going on, putting all the pieces together, absent a wild card or war with Iran. And it got very close over there last week with India and Pakistan going at it, bombs away on both sides. Two nuke powers, that's right. So absent a wild card, we're gonna see the economy growing, continuing the way it is now. No great growth like last year in 2018, but moderate growth. Now, what else is going on? Well, inflation isn't going up. And we know why, and we're the only ones speaking about it. We call it Gerald Salenti's 5-0 formula, open markets. Why is inflation happening? Whew. Open markets, you could keep flooding product in at low prices. No inflation. Overproduction. Whew. You got more production out in the world than people could consume. That's right, an overcapacity. Online brought down prices. Open markets, online, overcapacity, overpopulation. You get more cheap labor than you could ever, ever dream of. That's why prices aren't going up. And that's why they can't see where it's going. So that brings us to the next element. Gold. And I love gold. I don't give any financial advice, but I've been buying gold since 1987. My first buy was at $187.50 an ounce. But eh, gold's not so strong. Why? Low inflation. The higher inflation goes, the higher the prices of gold go. So right now, we're in a gold stalemate. We've been on InfoWars well over a decade. And my gold forecasts have been right on target. And for the last six years, I've been saying the same thing over and over and over and over and over, and it's 100% correct. I keep saying that gold has to break over $1,450 an ounce to gain that strength back that it had in 2010 and 2011. Hasn't happened. The last time, in the last few weeks, several weeks, we saw gold go around that 1350 mark. I said, nah, gotta hit that 1385 mark for it to keep moving forward to get to that 1450 an ounce mark. Didn't happen. Now we're seeing gold going below that 1300 mark. So where's the bottom of gold? Gold could go down a bit. It could go down probably, as I've been saying again for years, 
to around the $1,200 mark. That's going to be the stabilizing mark because that's what it costs to pull gold out of the ground, whether it's down in Peru to South Africa, you average it out, that's the cost. So that's the gold story. Silver, silver follows gold. But again, we do not see a global slowdown, even with the banksters pumping in more monetary methadone, putting in more cheap money, that still isn't going to boost gold according to our forecasts. It has to be a wild card. It has to be a black swan event. It has to be something that no one expects that causes turmoil, that shifts economies and equity markets sharply downward because gold is a safe haven asset. And right now, people aren't looking for a safe haven anything. No need for guns, gold, and a getaway plan at this moment. However, and again, I don't give financial advice. It's very good, I believe, and only speaking for myself, because by the way, that is the motto of our magazine, The Trends Journal, Think for Yourself. I say, oh, holding 10% of it in your assets, if you could afford it, is the way to go. So on to the economy. No sharp downturn. Matter of fact, in this same Cartoon News Network story, they're saying that future traders now fully expect the Federal Reserve to remain on the sidelines throughout 2019, according to Fed Fund future prices. We disagree. If this economy slows down, whew, interest rates go down. They raised them nine times since 2015. They could lower them nine times in no time. If the economy slows down, interest rates go down, the economy boosts up just a little bit. We're we'll back in a few. Hey. Thanks for having me on, Alex Jones. Great to be hosting Alex Jones Show on InfoWars. And I want to thank Alex and all the staff and all that they do to keep people informed of what's going on as the news gets more and more blacked out. That's right. And it's up to you if you want to hear truth and freedom and liberty prosper to help Alex Jones to keep InfoWars going and fight the censorship trend that's censoring so many of us, not only Alex Jones, very many of us. So to keep InfoWars going, and I put my money where my mouth is, I buy InfoWars great products, like DNA Force Plus is finally back in stock at InfoWarsStore.com and 33% off as one of our most powerful formulas, we've been having difficulty keeping DNA Force Plus stock in the store. After almost a month out of stock, our DNA Force Plus formula is finally back in our warehouse with 33% off. So look it up, learn about it. If you want to stay healthy, this is one of the products to consider to keep you going keep you loose and healthy, smart, and alive. Great products, support InfoWars, put your money where your heart and mind is. You know, I want to move on a little bit. We talked about the economy. What's going on down there in Venezuela? You know, all the folks that subscribe to the Trends Journal, this is no surprise to them. Because the problems really hit the U.S. media in the middle of January of this year, but now in November, Trends Journal, we did a story called Triangle of Death. And we had forecasts that Colombia, Argentina, and Brazil were forming a triangle that was formed by the United States, with the United States, the brains behind it, to overthrow the democratically elected government of Maduro. 
Now, I say democratically elected because there's a number of facts that should be discussed that aren't making the prostitute news, the mainstream media. Prostitutes, those people that get paid to put out by their corporate johns and their Washington whoremasters. Venezuela last year had requested when they held the election that the United Nations send in monitoring teams. The United States vetoed it. Despite that, a number of international groups went in, we listed some of them in the Trends Journal, that monitored the elections. Yes, the voter turnout was low, about 46%. But higher than a lot of other elections going on around the world, like they just had over there, and one of the African countries, only 32% of the people turned out. But that didn't make the news. So according to, again, it's not whether you like the guy Maduro, they're in trouble, is the guy a jerk? You know, none of my business, because I launched Occupy Peace, and I honor the founding fathers, no foreign entanglements. And just for the record, every time we're bringing democracy to a country, since the end of World War II, it's ended in disaster. So this one will, too. And it's also, to me, it has nothing to do with democracy. It has to do with Venezuela sitting on the world's largest oil reserves and our secretary, excuse me, national security advisor, John Bolton, made the statement out loud, the words are there, that he wants American companies in there to pull out the oil. So it's not about their broccoli crop or anything else. Maybe they got bananas, who knows? It's about oil. So. Going back to what we're saying, the hypocrisy in the coverage of this. Here's the front page story of today's Wall Street Journal. You see that headline up there and all that big picture. The spare grows on Venezuelan border as pressure on Maduro rises. I mentioned there's virtually no coverage of the police brutality being committed against the Yellow Vest protesters in France. They're our ally. How about what's going on in Algeria? Algeria? See the marketplace in old Algiers. Send me photographs and souvenirs. That's an old song. Algeria. They got a cat over there that's been running for five years. Five, five elections, five terms, he's going for his fifth. He hasn't spoken to the public, you ready for this? In seven years. He can't talk. They got him in a wheelchair, strapped into it. He's had a number of strokes. The country's being run by a mafia. The people are protesting. The biggest protests they had since Algeria fought for its freedom against France when France was colonizing it back in the 1960s. Back in the 1960s, it was still colonizing joints. It never changes. Anyway, that's not making the news. It's not making the news what's going on in Sudan or Congo. Barely a peep about what's going on in Mali. Hey, did everybody forget about Yemen? The slaughter going on. It's only the world's, the world's worst humanitarian crisis. Hey, how come nobody's talking about bringing humanitarian aids into Yemen? This is all propaganda. Most of the people don't know what's going on. Of all the Democratic contenders in the upcoming 2020 presidential reality show, only one has stood up and spoken out against the United States' involvement in Venezuela, and that's Tulsi Gabbard, a congresswoman from Hawaii. And 
also an Iraq combat veteran. The only one. They all got lockjaw. So, most people don't know what's going on. And it looks like, again, going back to what could destabilize the markets, how about a nice bloody war? That'll do the trick. Because again, if you think we have, and I'm all in favor of no illegal immigration, if you think we have a problem now, it will get a lot, lot worse if there's bombs away over Venezuela. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Hey, thanks for having me on InfoWars. Great being here and giving you the trends that are shaping the future. Tomorrow's trends today. You turn in network news, what do you get? Yesterday's news tomorrow. We here at the Trends Journal, you get tomorrow's news today, history before it happens. We look at the current events, swarming future trends, and why the people so dumbed down, as mentioned before about people don't know what's really going on in Venezuela or around the world. Look at that stupid cartoon episode of the Cohen Congress hearings. What a bunch of stupid garbage. Who would waste their time and waste their life with that kind of information that won't help you in any way. And that's what we try to do, is look at the current events forming future trends and giving you the forecast to help you prepare, prevail, and prosper in the times ahead. And again, we're not gloom and doomers. As I said, when I call the economic 9-11 on September 19th, 2018, one day before the S&P 500 peaked for the year, I was 100% correct, because after that, the markets declined dramatically. Having the worst December with the Dow since the Great Depression. But they did an about face. The Federal Reserve did a U-turn. Rather than aggressively raising rates, now they're going to be, quote, patient. Again, we are the only ones out there. I read you the Fred Futures before, or virtually among the only ones say, out there saying that if the global economy slows down and the U.S. economy slows down, they're going to lower interest rates. Trump is in charge. If you don't think he has any sway over the Fed share, that's your opinion. We look at it differently. Going back and hearing Paul Volcker, who was the Federal Reserve Chairman under Ronald Reagan, this is when he inflated, they were, they were raising interest rates like 18%, you know, way up there. Home mortgage, 21%. And Reagan called Volcker into the White House. And this is from Volcker's mouth. And he was sat down in the library and James Baker, which was the chief of staff for Reagan, said to Volcker, you have orders from the president not to raise interest rates before the election, and they didn't. We got the 2020 presidential reality show shaping up, and what a show it is. It's the greatest freak show on earth, ladies and gentlemen, and children of all ages. Look at the Democratic clowns all stepping up. We got Bernie Sanders. We got... The phony Elizabeth Warren, one after another, nothing. And all they're talking about is taxing the rich, which, by the way, I'm in favor of. We got this little Cuomo over here, the governor, and uh, a little boy born on third base and thought he hit a home run with his arrogant attitude. Him and his brother Chrissy would be a nobodies if daddy was in Mario Cuomo, the governor of New York. Yeah, the privileged prince over here playing governor. He says, if you tax the rich, they'll leave. Hey, sayonara, see you later. 
You go back to 1990, excuse me, back to post-World War II. In the 1950s, when the middle class in America was really building and booming, this is under Eisenhower, hardly a socialist. You know what the marginal rate hit at the height? 94% tax for the very, very rich. Today, it's 37%. It's higher in most other countries in Europe. And all these tax breaks and all the tax deals they get and all the money that they wash offshore, I say, yeah, let's tax them. But that's not going to build the economy. Yes, it'll bring more money in. And yes, it should be equalized because they monopolize things. When I was a kid, there were no hedge funds or private equity groups. They're not creating anything other than wealth for themselves. Tax them. Not making things, not building things. So that's what this election is going to be about. Not creating jobs, not building the economy. There's nothing positive coming out there as we see it. Again, this is unprecedented in modern American history where we have so many people running for office. So here's what I propose. Do away with the gangs. The gangs that are murderers and thieves. The political bloods and crips. The sociopaths and psychopaths that lead, lie us into wars. Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction and ties to al-Qaeda. And now we got Assad has to go. Gaddafi has to go. Yeah, one after another. Now we got Venezuela. Murderers and thieves. They steal our dough and the names are too big to fail and to bail out their big buddies. General Motors. Yes, sir. And one after another, the bigs get the bailouts and we get the shaft. You know, when we talk about taxes, how about all the people have to pay these moronic school taxes and property taxes? The rich don't get hit with this. This is a very unjust, very unjust taxing system. So my solution, the Salenti solution, very simple. Do away with the gang. In virtually every state, it's impossible for an independent to run for office. And if they do, they get barely any coverage. Do away with the political parties. You run on the merits of who you are, not the fraudulent gang that you belong to. I love Obama. I hate Trump. Stop. It's a freak show. Republicans, Democrats, murderers and thieves. No political parties. Let we the people vote for whoever we want. And, hey, this is good for the Me Too movement. Bring the debates back in the hands of the women. That's right. Those are the ones that used to run the debates before the networks took it over with the political party. The League of Women Voters used to run the debates. Now we got the mafia, the Democrats and Republicans putting up who they only want you to hear. Me too. League of Women Voters, let them run the debates Stop the presidential reality show. Make it a fair run for anybody that wants to run. We need a new system. The old one is dead, corrupt, inefficient, illegitimate, murderers, and thieves. So, no parties for the 2020 election, only the person, because it's only the morality of the individual that will make the difference.
We'll be back in just a few. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti hosting the Alex Jones Show on InfoWars. Great being here. Very appreciative for all that Alex Jones does to bring truth, justice in the American way to the people as we're getting censored by the monopolies. And that's all they are. The Twitter, the Facebook, Google, YouTube, just nothing more than monopolies, monopolizing what used to be free, the internet. So to keep freedom ringing, do what you can to support InfoWars. And one of the great products that they have is they're introducing InfoWars Life Protein Bars, 40% off when you buy two or more boxes. Getting your protein has never been easier with InfoWars Life Protein Bars. Available in both chocolate, peanut butter, and vanilla coconut flavors. Each bar is a great tasting way to get your energy and fuel on the go. InfoWars Life Protein Bars are formulated to give you straightforward energy whenever you need it with nutrient-packed power, and no unnatural additives. And now, more than ever, these are products that you should consider, not only for your personal health physically, but for your mental health, so that you have more and more of InfoWars out there, their information spreading across the 50 states and around the world while keeping you healthy wealthy, and wise. So that's why I'm a supporter of InfoWars, particularly in this time of censorship that's hitting so many of us. And I meant, mentioned the products to keep you healthy. I, and we're talking before about the presidential reality show. And the big issue is climate change, climate change. Here's my reaction to climate change. If you dump trillions of tons of poison into the earth, into the water, and into the air, you think it'll have a negative effect on you? So rather than climate change, how about change where they stop poisoning us with all the junk foods that they're pushing out into the marketplace? that are chemically filled, chemical, the perfect name, chemicals. That's right. Hey, how's that water over there in Flint, folks? Remember Obama was going to fix it? Folks, yeah, he folked you, didn't he? Yep, folks, folks, folks. That's all he ever did. And it's not only there, it's all around. That's why you go to InfoWars and you buy those filters to get clean water to eat better foods. This, to me, is where the politicians should be railing against. Because I mentioned about the gangs, the Republicans and the Democrats. All these little low-life people, I shouldn't say all of them, maybe 99.999% of the low-life politicians are nothing more than whores but they're corporate whore masters who give, pay them off to do what they want, to put the regulations in that they want so they could sell their deadly products. Oh, watch out for that 5G that's coming soon. By the way, we write about it in detail in our Trends Journal, trendsjournal.com, the only magazine in the world where you will read history before it happens. Money back guaranteed, only $10.75 a month. Oh, and we're coming out with a new Trend Vision 2020 podcast. That's right. We just launched it. Being hosted by Doug Grunther. Yep, a great radio host that'll be hosting our video radio or video audio podcast Monday through Thursday, plus trend alerts each week. Again, money back guarantee. What you get from us, you won't get anywhere else. 
as far as trends in the news, shaping the future to help you prevail, prosper during these very, very volatile times. So going back to supporting InfoWars and buying the products, look at how they're killing us. Again, this 5G, this, these towers they're going to be putting up in neighborhoods, the radio frequency radiation by a number of studies is truly deadly, as are the information coming out with cell phones. We write about all this, and that's why I don't carry a cell phone. I've been doing work. I did work for the Cellular Telecommunications Industry Association back in the day when they had these big boxes in the trunks of cars with aerials. So I've been following it since then. So this is what you get in the Trends Journal, and then you put all the pieces together again, and this is why you should consider buying more of the products from InfoWars to keep you healthy, wealthy, and wise. Because, again, talk about climate change, forget about it. How about talking about chemical change? And again, they're banning, whether it's Facebook or Pinterest, anything about vaccinations. You can't say anything bad about vaccinations. You have to believe Big Pharma. Yeah. Anyway, another interesting story. Oh, talking about Trend Vision 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, we have as our cannabis analyst, Bradford Beckerman. This is a true life story of a young man who almost died. You see the scar on his head and how he was saved. Went to India, big cannabis story. He's also in the business. He is the cannabis king. He knows more about, we will put him up against anybody, any place, anywhere in the world. We're having a cannabis Trend Vision 2020 special each week. I mention this because this is how the prostitutes shove garbage down your throat. Big story here in the toilet paper record, the New York slime. I should say it to be proper. The paper of record, the New York Times. Yeah, out of times, out of luck. Goodbye, you keep selling us the war and just feeding us garbage. Look at this big picture here. Cannabis grower wants lifestyle experts touch. Martha Stewart has taken on an advisory role with the Canadian company Canopy Growth to create and promote a new line of hemp-based CBD products. Martha Stewart <laughs> doesn't come close to Bradford Beckerman. No one does. So anyway, if you want to know more about cannabis and as Trends Journal subscribers know, and I've done it on Alex Jones, we were among the first to call reefer money madness that this would be a huge trend. This is just the beginning. It's going to be a global trillion dollar business. So moving on, the story here that came out just recently, judge rules that a military draft of men is unconstitutional. Yep. And the Judge Gray Miller Federal District Court in Southern District of Texas took note of the Supreme Court 1981 ruling that the expulsion of women from the draft was, quote, fully justified because women were then not allowed to serve in combat. But the Pentagon abolished those restrictions in 20. 15, opening the way for women to serve in any military role for which they could qualify. And they're talking about the draft. Guys have to sign up for the draft. So I say, me too, you too. And I say, bring back the draft. That's right. You have kids, forget about it. You got to go serve your time. Everybody got to go serve your time. You bring back the draft, there won't be any war no more because no one will want to go. So that's the way I see it. 
You think for yourself. This is Gerald Salenti. Thank you for having me on InfoWars. Again, put your money where your heart and mind are and do all you can to support InfoWars and the Trends Journal, history before it happens. See you soon. Um, the infant would be delivered. Uh, the infant would be kept comfortable. Uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mothers. And telling us that the future is too grim for us to think about raising a family. There's scientific consensus that the lives of children are going to be very difficult. Is it okay to still have children? I told you 24 years ago that the globalists have an anti-human, anti-child agenda. And back then it was more secretive only in their white papers. Now it's all over the news. In fact, Alexandria Cortez, or AOC, doesn't just say you shouldn't have children, but that the world's going to end in 12 years. And of course, the governor of Virginia, when he's not running around in blackface, well, he's saying they're gonna kill babies after they're born. And Trump tried to get a bill passed to not kill babies after they're born, which is already the law. And the Democrats of the Senate shot it down. Senate Democrats just voted against legislation to prevent the killing of newborn infant children. The Democrat position on abortion is now so extreme that they don't mind executing babies after birth. This is America, this is the world, 2019. Brought to you by the technocrats, the eugenicists, the globalists. They call themselves fascists, liberals, communists, socialists. It's all the same. Watch my film Endgame. It's free online until they delete it. I made it 11 years ago. Endgame, blueprint for global enslavement. Now that said, if they can't abort a baby before it's born, or now kill it after it's born, and not fill them full of all these toxic vaccines tainted by design to brain damage them, if they can't fry us with electromagnetic cell phone radiation or GMO, or brainwash us with this toxic culture, they're going to hit us with people having major mineral and vitamin deficiencies. And the biggest deficiency in the mainline studies in America and around the world is pure iodine. In fact, going back in the 20s, the IQs were 15, 20, 25, 30 points lower. There was major deformity, major gout, major problems with the thyroid. And the federal government put a cruddy form of iodine in the salt and IQs went up on average 15 points. The deformities went way down. Our environment is lacking iodine. That's why coastal populations live longer on average because they do get some seafood that has some iodine, but a lot of that seafood is contaminated. And of course, in the olden days, until just like 100 years ago, people ground up bones and put it in their bread. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman, be they live or be they dead, I'll grind their bones to make my bread. But the good news is for your children, for adults, for everybody, we have the pure deep earth crystal iodine in original X2 that nobody else has and nobody else has brought to market. Now I brought out X3 because some scientists said you need all three types of iodine and some folks like it better. But I was able to secure with the original manufacturer a better deal by breaking my deal with them and playing guts ball where it's only been sold out for a couple months and we got the new deal done just about a month ago and they are manufacturing it now. So if people get on the waiting list, in about two weeks, we'll be shipping X2 original, all deep earth crystal, pure atomic iodine, directly to your door across the world. X2 is back, it'll be here in two weeks. Uh, this is a blessing, so get yours at InfoWarsStore.com today. Again, thank you for your support, but support your own body with the purest, best iodine out there, X2 at InfoWarsStore.com.